and welcome beautiful people my fellow virtual pilots welcome to another episode of the wrong side simulations bringing you the best content from the wrong side of the airplane the right seat and as always my name is blake and i'm a real world flight dispatcher aiming to bring you a little more context to your flight sim viewing experience so for today we're going to be talking about the difference between contingency fuel extra fuel and tanker fuel this is going to be a tankering flight we're going to tanker on up to boston and see just how much fuel we can carry on the way up there and see if we need to even take gas coming back but before getting too deep into it let's jump to the chat and say hello and good morning to well, i guess now officially eastern standard time it is noon <clears throat> but nonetheless chase what is going on you were uh super early weren't you 13 hours and 19 minutes early look at you overachiever <laughs> aviation geek what's up dude long time no talk psych we just talked the other day in uh in shack's chat uh don't forget to hit the like button what chase said don't forget to hit that like button wes good morning or afternoon damn it see it feels like morning to me um dustin good mo afternoon damn it see it's that quick I, that's how bad my my short-term memory loss is <laughs> Uh, Lena Lakes, afternoon. How's she? How's she going, eh? <laughs> well, she's going pretty good there, you know for sure. It's look, it's looking pretty good. It's sunny and clear skies out here in uh, in uh, Myrtle Beach. When you say "eh," hey, sounds like I got Canadian in my head. <laughs> Brian, good morning. How's it going? Or afternoon, wherever you're at. Welcome aboard. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get on up in the cockpit, and then we'll uh, go plan this flight and get underway. So as always, gotta actually walk on the airplane, right? Get all seated and comfortable and stuff. Sweet. <clears throat> well, so my apologies for the delay. Uh, I was planning to get started at 11:30 actually had this thing scheduled and um like ready to go ahead of time had it like scheduled last night which is way early for me usually i'm kind of more of a pop-up streamer because i never really know when i can um when i can stream so i get up <clears throat> i was like all right you know i got plenty of time to to get the sim fired up and get everything kind of positioned how i want it and then i look at my phone and my phone says uh, dispatch manager in dock starting at 10:30. Well, it was 11 o'clock. I was up until three in the morning, uh, flying in the virtual skies, and I had no uh, dispatch manager in dock on my phone. So I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, oh shit! Like, am I already about to mess up this manager opportunity before I even start? Um, so. I jump in uh, they were doing a uh, teams meeting uh, some of the dispatch managers there's five of us and uh, so I jump in and they're like oh look who just woke up and joined us finally da, 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 this kind of stuff and so they kind of gave me a hard time like they were messing with me they're like you're actually not required to be here because uh, you're working tomorrow and we're flying up there to do in dock tomorrow so you actually don't have to do this and I was like oh good because nobody told me about this in the past few hours so anyways then uh, that kind of threw me for a loop kind of scared me a little bit because I was like oh shit I'm already showing up 30 minutes late on I mean I'm not supposed to be working today so uh, but yeah that's that's pretty much why I was behind because uh, sat and chat with him for a few minutes and um, we got some uh, some in doc to do tomorrow and then job interviews on Thursday. So I uh, was having a little conversation with them. And uh, yeah, so my apologies on the late start. It's only about 30 minutes. So typical typical airline world, right? <clears throat> Hashim, what's up? Early sim training hours, thankfully free of my evenings for the good old Phoenix. Nice. How's um how's training going? How how are you liking and transitioning from the side stick to the yoke? All right, so let's uh, let's get to planning this thing, shall we? 
And I'm kind of thinking maybe today, too, we could uh, take a look at PFPX instead of just Simbrief. Y'all let me know if y'all want to see PFPX as far as, which uh, if y'all are unfamiliar with PFPX, it's an uh, Aerosoft product. Um, it's pretty old. Um, it's not really a whole lot that needs to be ever supported on it anyways. But um, PFPX stands for Professional Flight Plan X. You know, everything in, this, in Microsoft or in Flight Sim has to have an X. Um, but it's a it's a little more in-depth version of flight planning software. So if you'd like to see that, we can definitely do that too. Um, y'all let me know. Let's get this weather map open. All right. So today we're going to be flying a round trip from uh, Myrtle Beach up to Boston and back. Let me turn this music off. I can't hear myself. Um, <clears throat> so first leg is going to be Spirit Wings 1120, and uh, it's kind of auto chosen everything for us again, as always, as we always do this. The stuff is pre filled out, uh, and then dispatch goes and changes what we need to change. Um, so first things first, let's look at the well, there is no Myrtle Atus, so let's look at the winds instead. All right, so currently winds are 240 at 10, gusting 16, uh, but they're 200 varying to 260, 10 statue miles, rain, I don't see no rain. Rex weather force is already dropping the ball. What's this timestamp? This is as a 1556Z, and they got 1456, so Rex weather force is a few minutes behind. If we do stop weather synthesis. Search weather. So, so stupid. So I'm, I'm trying out Rex Weather Force again. I haven't tried it since first started simming. And not first started simming, but first started flying Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, I never really liked it because the transitions were always like super aggressive. You'd be flying along partly cloudy skies. All of the clouds are below you. And then all of a sudden, weather updates. And you are in the middle of like towering cumulonimbus. Thunderstorms everywhere. Death all around. I uh, didn't really like that, so I ran away from it, and now I'm not really happy with Microsoft Flight Sims weather, because as we've talked about before, the tops are too low, and there's no thunderstorms, and all that kind of stuff, so I'm giving this a shot. Well, as we can see here, we've got rain in the uh, in the METAR. This METAR was observed at 1556 Zulu, and down here, in uh, Weather Force... Oh, there it goes. It finally updated. Okay. Finally. Let's see if it's showing rain in the sim. Nope. I see no rain. Make sure this is on. Oh, that's why. Okay. It can't be on live weather. Now let's try. You got all this stuff that has to be done before turning on the weather. Pick your flight, go to um, clear skies, put in your route and stuff, which I didn't do because I feel like that's going to mess with whatever's going on inside the airplane. Uh, click fly and then start synthesis. And it'll inject, hopefully, and hopefully we'll see some moderate rain when we jump back in here. Okay, so anyways, now that the weather is finally caught up. <clears throat> um, so, again, winds are 240 at 10, but they are varying from 200 to 260. Um, 10 statue miles, rain, few at 2800, temperatures 32. 
altimeter is 30, zero, zero. Uh, then in Boston, winds are 270 at 18, gusting 2.3, 10 statute miles, few at 4,000, few at 25,000. Temperature 31, dew point 18, and altimeter is 2996. Um, cool. So based off of the winds, let me get me a airport chart. Probably gonna be 18. Two seventy. That's pretty much a straight crosswind. All right, so we'll take off three six, two hundred to two sixty. Now we're gonna take off one eight. With the way that the winds are varying, not that the sim's gonna actually read it correctly, but with the way that the winds are varying, <clears throat> it's favoring more of a southerly direction. So we're gonna take off one eight. So one eight's in the box. For Boston, we actually do have an ATIS for them, so we can check that. Uh, let's see, approaches are being conducted to converging runways ILS 27, RNAV 32, so we're going to do 27, 27 is in the box. Sweet, so now we've got our, uh, we've got our runways. Uh, so now let's check what the weather's looking like in between. Okay, pretty clear. You got Myrtle down here. Obviously, Boston's all the way up here. So good weather. Don't anticipate any issues with that. And there's there's other ways that dispatchers will get a little more in depth with like what's the weather going to do. We got different sources, but I, I try to show y'all pretty much just free sources stuff that y'all can y'all can have access to. Um, it doesn't do much good for me to show y'all stuff like, um, like COSPA. We use COSPA a lot. Dustin will probably know uh, a thing or two about this. Um, but uh, COSPA is a pretty good resource for looking at future radar. This kind of thing. Overlays TCFs and a bunch of other information we can turn off and on. But... It, there's not really any weather in between Myrtle and Boston for at least the next five to six hours based off of this. So, But it doesn't do a whole lot of good for me to show you all that when you don't have access to that. So I don't do that very often. All right. <clears throat> so injury weather is good. Um, it's a little warm today. So there's always the possibility of some turbulence on the climb out. No big deal. Um, en route. I don't know. I need to look at surface fronts. I don't know if I'm going to have that on here. Let's go. See, I don't use this. We have other stuff. <laughs> I'm trying not to show anything that you don't have access to. Oh well. I guess we'll just go to WSI. <clears throat> now this is um something that I get through work. Y'all will not have access to this, but there's plenty of resources that can show you 
some of what this shows, like the fronts, whatever. That's the main thing I'm worried about with this, <clears throat> is looking at fronts and pie reps and that kind of stuff. Um, so between Myrtle and Boss, not a whole lot going on. Got a trough, got a cold front. This cold front might stir up some uh, a little bit of turbulence as we get a little bit further north. Do got a moderate turbulence pie rep. Who reported this? But anyways, so really the only constraint that I can see weather-wise is probably going to be some turbulence. So not a big deal there. Um, last but not least, let's check Boston's arrival rate. This is something we would definitely look at. If uh, we're probably going to get out of here at I don't know 16:45. It's about an hour and a half flight, so 17.45, 18.15-ish. So the arrival rate's getting a little high. Right before we get there. But after we get there, or like around the time we get there and after, it's it's a little low with another spike later on. Um, so Mike would take this into consideration. Realistically, probably wouldn't be a big issue, but... All right, <clears throat> so now we've got to figure out our fuel and what we're going to do fuel-wise. <clears throat> but before we do, let's just go ahead and run a calculation, let it choose what it wants to choose, and uh, we'll go from there. So we got a route in. I think it's route number two. No, it's route number one. I want route number two. That one's better. Generates. Drew Stone, what is up? Good morning. <clears throat> Spirit looking sexy, picking up my crumble cookie. Oh, nice. Brian, at least you didn't cancel the flight. Nope, not canceling. Not today. Try not to cancel as much as possible. <laughs> you can blame the 30 minutes on ATC. That's about right. In fact... Glad you said that. Forgot to check uh, the National Airspace OIS page. So as of right now, there are no flow programs. There's no ground stops. There's no departure delays out of anywhere. That's always a good thing. So no ATC delays as of yet. But we could potentially call it on arrival demand spike. So let's go back to edit flight. Actually, I guess we need to look at it first, right? So put us at 37,000 feet for an hour, 39-minute flight. Cool. That's that's fine. Although I think that's probably going to change once we start tankering. We're going to be adding a lot of, of weight to the airplane. Uh, so 370, hour, 39 minutes. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. All right, so edit flight. Now we are a little bit behind, so we're going to go CI-99. And from here... The first thing we need to do, we've got our 10 minutes of policy fuel that's below the line. That's just like company policy fuel. Uh, we talk about that every time we do this, but per my company fuel policy, we always have 10 minutes of extra fuel that's below the line that can be used for anything. Any fuel that's below the line, and we'll talk about the line and fuel requirements and that kind of stuff. But any fuel that's below the line um, is... Uh, you know, it can be used for whatever. So <clears throat> the next thing we need to figure out is our contingency fuel. So the two contingencies that we saw when we're looking around, like weather's clear, but we might have a little bit of turbulence once we get north crossing that cold front. Um, and we got a little bit of arrival demand. So we have to put, we have to separate contingency fuel from tanker fuel. So even though we're going to round trip or do our best to round trip tanker this flight as much as we can, um, you still have to, if you have any known constraints or forecast constraints, you still have to have your fuel separate on the paperwork for those constraints. You can't just be like, all right, well, here is 9,000 pounds of tanker fuel, which all goes below the line. It's not required fuel to have on the airplane. So you got 9,000 9, pounds of fuel below the line, but then yet in the remarks as a dispatcher, you're talking about, possible turbulence and high arrival rate 
you still have to have fuel set aside in contingency because that fuel is required to be on the airplane. It is going to be included in the men takeoff fuel. Sorry, I'm kind of fighting burps because I'm drinking energy drink. So anyways, you have to have contingency fuel for your contingencies. So arrival rate, a little turbulence, we'll just call it 20 minutes. Plus, we're going into the northeast. Traffic volume can get a little uh, a little thick with, with three Cs. So 20 minutes would be fine. Uh, maybe even 25. But that's the kind of thing, too, is like, the tanker fuel is still there. It's still usable fuel. So as long as we got fuel set aside for the contingencies, I might do 20 minutes instead of 25 minutes because really if 20 minutes turns out not to be enough, we still got that other tanker fuel. But if you're talking about contingencies in your remarks as a dispatcher, you have to have some quantity of fuel set aside for the contingencies. So we've met that now. Uh, so tanker wise now when tankering there's a few things to consider when tankering um, number one <clears throat> is the runway that you're gonna be landing on contaminated or not grooved slippery when wet that kind of stuff um, if that's the case per my company um, policy we're not supposed to tanker to runways that are contaminated so like slush or you know any any type of like frozen precip type stuff uh, standing water. A wet runway is not a contaminated runway. Um, it's going to be standing water or worse. Um, also, if the airplane is going to remain overnight, um, so if we're flying to Boston and the airplane is going to sit there overnight, you may or may not really want to tanker. Um, our company policy says not to, um, but I'll still tanker a little bit. Is if the airplane's not going to overnight in a hub then there's not really the threat of a tail swap because the the reason why you don't want to tanker a whole lot of gas into a hub where the plane's going to remain overnight is because that aircraft might swap onto say like we're leaving I don't know we're leaving Lauderdale and then all of a sudden you know we we've tankered like 12,000 pounds of extra gas and then all of a sudden the airplane breaks down and they swap us to a different airplane so that we can, you know, take our trip. But now the broke airplane uh, gets swapped onto Lauderdale, Orlando, which is a super short flight. And now, because of all the extra fuel that is sitting on the airplane, now that um, that plane would be overweight to go to Orlando. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things that we take in consideration is remain overnight. Now, if, it's, if the plane's going to go remain overnight in, like, you know, some little, like, Myrtle or something, where there's not really, not going to be a threat of a swap, then I'll still tanker a little bit. Like, 3,000, 4,000 pounds, that's not going to ever put you overweight for anything. Um, even if the flight gets swapped into something really short, like, oh, we got to repo the flight now from Myrtle to Atlanta, um, and for whatever reason, the airplane is full of passengers, Three, 4,000 pounds of gas is not going to put you overweight, at least on the Airbus. Now, every airplane is different. Um, you know, I dispatch Airbuses. Um, but if you're dispatching, like, CRJs and ERJs, then, like, you're never going to get that amount of extra gas on those airplanes anyways. Um, fuel's totally different with those. Like, tanker, and you're looking at, like, 1,500, 2,000 pounds, more than likely, on a full airplane. If the airplane is empty, then, yeah, you can, you can put a lot more than that. But So, anyways, for today, <clears throat> we're going to tanker up to Myrtle. And since we're uh, to Boston, since we're coming right back, we're going to try to take as much as we can. The last thing we'll take into consideration is obviously landing weight or takeoff and landing weight. But we want to have a bit of a buffer uh, between our takeoff weight and our landing weight. Uh, that way, in the event that we were going to be heavier than planned, we're not going to be over max takeoff weight or max landing weight. So typically, we try to keep around a 2,000 pound buffer between either one. Um, this one is going to be more of a landing weight uh, just because we're taking off lighter. So uh, more than likely, once we tack on a bunch of gas, the landing weight is going to be more of uh, of what we want to pay attention to. Uh, let's see what else. So we got this. Da, 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 da. 
Uh, we'll leave altitude in auto, and we'll see what it puts us at once we uh, tack on a bunch of gas. So now I'm going to switch to pounds. I didn't see what the landing weight was before, but if we got 131 passengers, 5,000 pounds of freight, that's going to be that's relatively light. Uh, so let's do. Let's start with 9,000 pounds, and we'll generate this. See what our landing weight looks like, and then go from there. Since we're pretty much done with this, we'll move this out the way. I don't see no rain, flight sim. Pisses me off. <clears throat> Alright, so now it has lowered our altitude down to 35,000 from 37. We've got 9,000 pounds of tanker fuel. Looking at our weights, takeoff weights 155.6. Oh, Lord. So I stand, uh, I stand incorrect. Uh, max takeoff weight is actually. Where did it actually give me? There's extra. Now give me all 9,000 pounds. And we still got our 20 minutes. So we're right at. This can't be right. Because we are. At, that doesn't make sense. It says that we're at max takeoff weight and at max landing weight. That, it's usually one or the other. It's not going to be both. So let's take off 2,000 pounds of fuel. See what that does. Okay, this makes no sense. This is supposed to be max, right? Yeah, so I took off 2,000 pounds of fuel, and it still says we're at max takeoff weight, max landing weight. Got the 7,000 pounds. We've got the 20 minutes. So this doesn't make any sense at all. These weights should be at least 2,000 pounds lighter than what it was from the last calculation because we took 2,000 pounds off, but yet they're the exact same. Forty-five minutes trip fuel. What am I missing? Surely sim brief isn't this stupid. So took the alternate off, and now the takeoff weight is less. And the landing weight is less. Got our 7,000 pounds of gas. Takeoff weight's 152.1 versus 155. So we're pushing that 2,000 pound buffer. <coughs> landing weight's 142.2 versus 145.5. Alright, now just because I want to see what this thing's doing, I'm going to tack that extra gas on again. In fact, you know what? We're going to tack on a bunch and just see what it does. So it still gave us the 13,000 pounds of gas. All right, so here's what I here's what I think Simbrief is doing. So because the aircraft has the fuel capacity for all this gas, it's putting it on the airplane but the weights are just like maxing out. So it's not showing us the true weight. Um, so we were about 2,500 pounds from max takeoff weight a while ago, and we tacked on like an extra, I don't know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 6,000 pounds more on top of what we'd already done. So theoretically what it should be doing is it should be telling us like, desired tanker fuel reduced kind of a thing so like however much tanker fuel we want we can't take it because it's putting the airplane overweight so it should be 
only allowing as much gas that the weight of the airplane will allow. But it's not doing that. It's just putting on all 13,000 pounds of gas, and it's just topping out our, our weights at 155.5 and 145.5. Not realistic at all. But in a way, it also doesn't really matter because we want that 2,000 pound buffer. So you would keep tinkering with the, t with the extra fuel until you get that 2,000 pound buffer. Now, since we've already kind of figured that out with no alternate, we know what to put it at. But just so that y'all know, that's what, uh, that's what Simbrief is doing. Is because it has fuel capacity for all that gas, it's putting the gas on. But the, it's not showing you the correct landing weights. It's just topping out at the max landing and takeoff weight. So really, those weights are far higher than what it's even showing you. Um, but, you know, this is a free program. It's not dispatch simulator, so uh, is what it is. Um, hmm. Very interesting. So let's do PFPX. Let's see what it does. And I hope this isn't boring to y'all. Um, I mean, because ultimately, you know, dispatching is not as fun as flying an airplane. But this is very much um, a yeah, better update. But this is very much the world of dispatch. So let's throw our flight together. Flight 1120. Myrtle. Boston. 1827 is what we want. Domestic it is scheduled. Scheduled time of departure. Cool. Aircraft. Let me just do this. That is an incorrect max landing weight. This is wrong. I need to go fix all this stuff. So in PFPX, you have aircraft profiles just like you do in Simbrief. All right. Payload. 131. Uh, what was the bags again? I think it was like 5.2. All right. Fuel. <clears throat> And this is one reason why I like, um, I don't know if y how well y'all can even see this, but this is one reason why I like PFPX, is it breaks down your fuel in different categories in the way that it should. So taxi, you've got however many pounds of taxi fuel you want to do. So out of Myrtle, probably do 300. Um, but you got extra time, then you also have contingency time, contingency fuel. If you want to land at a certain fuel quantity, you can tell it to do that as well. It's pretty nice. You can also apply MEL CDL fuel. So if uh, a certain CDL increases a fuel burn, um, you know, whatever the case may be, if you want to run the APU for the entire flight, say you've got an IDG engine driven generator that is out, uh, that MEL does require to run the APU for the entire flight. You can tell it to do that. It's pretty cool. Um, so for contingency fuel in time, 20 minutes like we just did, and then our extra fuel, we're just going to start with 9,000 pounds again. Um, I don't really know why it separates hold time versus contingency time. But for us, hold and contingency are kind of like in the same category. Um, costs, if you wanted to do costs, you could. Um, which is why you would tanker. And I guess maybe we should talk about that too. The reason why airlines would tanker and say gas is 
way cheaper in Myrtle Beach than it is in Boston. Therefore, we're going to try to tanker the whole trip so that when we get to Boston, we don't have to really buy any gas. Therefore, the airline's saving money. Although, the more gas you fly with, the higher your your trip burn is going to be because you're carrying a lot of extra weight. So it takes, you know, it takes more engine power to to push that weight. So, little tidbits to think about. Uh, route. Copy this one from Simbrief. Eighteen twenty-seven and build it. Cool. Apply. And I don't want an alternate. And we can also run takeoff performance. This is something also that we do in dispatch. Uh, this is how we would run takeoff performance for any. Uh, I don't think Jay's in here, but uh, our boy Jay, who is in the process of getting his dispatch license, he's having to do math to do this uh, but in real life dispatch this is all you got to do uh, so let's see flaps optimum thrust optimum air conditioning on anti-ice off I've got the correct winds in there it is we're gonna call it wet calculate and obviously all this too you can do in um, the Phoenix flyby wires or Phoenix uh, EFB just wanting to go into a Flaps 3 takeoff, that's weird. Not doing that. We can go Flaps 2. <coughs> anyway, so you run your uh, run takeoff performance, a plot. It's going to show up on the OFP. Same with landing. Dry. Although this is really weird. It's got, we have, oh, it's like it swapped the runways on us. We want runway 27. Flaps full, manual landing, packs on, any ice off, it's dry, calculates. Apply that. Alright, now we can compute the flight. And everything should be fine. Because it came back green. If it were overweight, it would be red. Uh, so let's see. Got the 9,000 pounds of fuel, but I want to see the landing weight. Okay, so plan takeoff weight's 148.4, max is 169.7, which is kind of what I would expect. And then landing weight, 139.3 versus 145.5, so we can tack on even more, um, even more gas. So, let's just keep it going, and let's see what it does. Let's just throw on, like, way too much gas, and um, see if it tells us that we're overweight. 20,000 pounds of fuel and look at that now it's red we got an error and it says landing weight exceeds max landing weight by 5,244 pounds that's what sim brief should be doing but it ain't <clears throat> so for anybody who wants to tanker be aware that sim brief will not let you know when you're overweight if you have the fuel capacity for the fuel it's going to put it on even though it's putting you way overweight so everybody beware all right <clears throat> now the other side of tankering too is we kind of want to know what the burn from boston back down to myrtle would be like so we know how much gas we need to put but i'm pretty sure we're not gonna be able to take as much as we would well it's gonna be close maybe um but yeah don't think we're gonna be able to take all the fuel to be able to completely do a round trip tanker um, so when we had 9,000, we were, uh, so let's just do 12,000 pounds on the tanker fuel. We are back below max landing weight, so it's green again. And on the weights, perfect. Max landing weight's 145.5, and our, our planned landing weight's 142.4. So, I like that. Um, so I kind of feel like maybe we should use PFPX instead of, uh, I well, know because it's got SimBrief integration. This was so irritating. We just always default to SimBrief because it's got integration in the airplane. Um, but yeah, so for anybody who's ever interested in um, PFPX, 
it's kind of the same thing as SimBrief. We do have our takeoff and our landing data. Uh, so essentially we could use this for our speeds if we needed to. So we've got our V speeds here, our Flex 58, Config 2, all that kind of stuff. Just features you don't get in SimBrief. Now you do have to have a Topcat, like purchase Topcat. It's uh, like a performance deal. It's really old. Missing a lot of airplanes. Um, but it does have a 320, so I'm able to uh, use that here. We've got our fuel breakdown, just like we do in SimBrief. Uh, this says our trip fuel is going to be 9,300 pounds. SimBrief says 9,900 pounds, so the burn's a little bit higher in, in SimBrief, although the airplane profile is a little bit different too. Um, got a reserve, got our contingency fuel 20 minutes which this says our contingency is 1,700 pounds. SimBrief says 2,000 pounds. So everything's consistently higher in SimBrief. But um, yeah, since everybody predominantly uses um, SimBrief, that's what we'll use. But I wanted to I wanted to compare the two and just see kind of what they did. All right, I guess we are now finally ready to get things going. So let's do that. Ground control. Alright, to the chat. What did I miss? <clears throat> Drew, what's up, bub? Welcome, welcome. Hashim says it feels way heavier for sure. More more so because our sim is a triple seven. Ah, I gotcha. But even in the sim, when you push Toga, the push you get is insane. It's producing the 320's max thrust. Oh my god. That's unreal. 35% in one. That's crazy. Coco, how's it going? <clears throat> I'm guessing it's 12.15 over in Orlando. It was. <laughs> Whenever you messaged. Uh, obviously, I got off on the deep end on the dispatch stuff. <clears throat> Brian, how often are planes fuel to do a round trip? Um... It just depends because fuel prices change every day. Uh, it, I don't know who puts in the fuel prices into our software, but um, like I know recently they messed up and everything was like fuel price wise in our system was super cheap if you were leaving Orlando or Vegas. Uh, so everybody was just like tankering out of Orlando and Vegas when in reality the fuel prices were incorrect. So we probably weren't really saving money. Um, but there's there's definitely a few flights every day that we try to round trip. Um, before like current times when gas was so crazy, um, going down to like Santo Domingo and Santiago um, were always like big tanker flights because the gas was so expensive coming out of those places in Punta or in uh, Dominican Republic. Um, so there's definitely like certain city pairs that that we tanker just about every single day. Um, but the fuel prices do change, and as fuel prices change, then um, you know our software shows us. And if it's a, there's certain parameters for a tanker flight, but if it meets those parameters, then we'll tanker it. And if it doesn't, then we don't. Cabana, what's up, dude? <coughs> top of the morning to, or top of the afternoon to you. <laughs> do St. Thomas to Lauderdale? Okay, we'll um, we'll definitely do that on a future stream. I'm not against it. I, I have St. Thomas scenery too, so we'll do a little uh we'll do a little St. Thomas Lauderdale action. Alright, so let's get the program in the aeroplane. I'm gonna import our sim brief. Make sure those weights are still good, yeah. Sweet mass and balance. I'm going to do a fast load. And let's get to programming the airplane. AOC menu, flight to net. All the same shit y'all see every single day. I can't see the button for the init though. There it goes. Receive messages. And then we're going to program over on this side. Actually, let's do it over here. And then we can 
do this. All right, so first things first. Well, let me do that. We all can see it. Ish. <clears throat> Alrighty. This out of the way. Okay, so AC status. Make sure our nav data is current. It is init. And there we go. We are spirit wings. Uh, Eleven twenty. Cost index, 99. Cruising altitude is now 350. And our temperature is minus 43. Tropo, 54,000 feet. Flight plan, Parting off one eight. <coughs> no SID. Insert. Boston arrival. ILS two seven. On the Roebuck three. Transition from JFK. And then approach via. Get these charts pulled up. <coughs> Seven All right, we'll just do a B it's kind of far out Could probably not really need it but if we need a shortcut we will insert that and moving over secondary flight plan we'll copy the active and uh, that's kind of far away. Well, plan a hold there. Rad nav. I think Myrtle's got a VOR. Nope. False. CRE. Alrighty, next, <clears throat> back over to init. Get our wind data uplink. And then we'll throw in all of our plan stuff. So we've got a zero fuel weight of 129.5. We'll throw in the standard 30 degrees, or 30%, whatever it is. Block fuel, 23.4. Taxi fuel, 0 0.3. Um, no route reserve. No alternate. Reserve fuel is 3.6. And we should end up having a lot of extra gas. So we got that discon, so we're just going to depart on the runway heading, and then we'll go direct. Tony, what's up, dude? Good afternoon. Hope your uh, Tuesday is going great. How's everything running over at Jetline? So, I'm getting little packs going real quick. 
So it's a board instantly. All right. <clears throat> Just waiting for them to finish boarding up. Oh, we finally got some rain. Jeez, man. Even Rex weather is behind quite a bit. Uh, so all the overhead is good. Let's get no that. Resend that load sheet. And let's get us a uh, altimeter. Or no. Not seen that. Oh, there we go. Finally. Top altitude, we're just gonna say <clears throat> doesn't look like anybody's on. Nope, nobody's on yet. Okay, uh so for top altitude we'll do four thousand feet. Cool, let's get the rest of this stuff put in. All right, zero fuel weights, 129.5. Whoa, it's a little bit heavier than uh, what was planned. Actually, no, it's not. I just typed it in wrong. I typed in 125. It's supposed to be 129. It's 129.5 slash 29.8. Cool. For the perf. OCG is 28.4. Do wet. Packs on. Calculate. Flaps one. Flex 57, uh, 35, 48, 50. And our altitude's 1030. Set. Got our three minute warm up for the APU. Turn the bleed on. Disconnect ground power. Pull all this stuff. Connect the tug. Shut the dough. All right. Make sure 
everything else is set. Oh, get this to auto. Men required takeoff fuels fifteen six. Plan takeoff weight one fifty two point four. All right. <clears throat> Departure brief. It's going to be a right seat takeoff. 320 for tail strike avoidance. No MLs or CDLs. It's going to be a single engine taxi. Um, we're going to be taxiing. Alpha, Alpha 6, short 1 8. Uh, let's see. There's no terrain. Um, no real weather is a factor other than some little rain showers. So maybe a little bumpy on the way out. We'll keep the seatbelt sign on. No hot spots, no runways across. Before V1, we're going to re reject the takeoff. Come on, please stop. Set the parking brake. Call flight sensitive station. Um, call for any income actions. Well, emergency evacuation checklist as required. After V1, I'm going to fly our engine out procedure. Go over to uh, TY and hold. We'll speed up. Clean up. Engine out is at 1030. We're over max landing weight. If we need to come back, it's going to be runway 18 or maybe we go somewhere else. Uh, on the way. If all goes as planned, uh, we're going to fly departure heading. Top altitude is 4,000 feet. We're squawking 2,000. Before start checklist. Before start checklist, maintenance log tails onboard and check. Copy that's complete. Gear pins, covers are removed. Signs are on auto. Eight ears are in nav. Uh, fuel min is 15.6. We've got a hell of a lot more than that at pretty much uh, 20, 23,400 pounds. Altimeter is 30 0, 0 set. If he's checked, when source last closing arm, beacons on, source idle, parking brakes on, transponder is in auto before start checklist is complete. Let's rock and damn roll. Shall we? Brakes release, start the push. And we're clear to start. I wonder why the airplane's already in 22.8. I wonder if it saved it that way. Break set. <clears throat> Good start on one. After start flow. After start checklist. Engine ice is off. Yellow pump is on. Road trim zero. After start checklist completes. Myrtle traffic, spirit wings, 1120, taxing over runway 18 via Alpha Alpha 6, Myrtle. So, guys, when it comes to <clears throat> the announcements, um, do y'all want me to have them turned up where you can always hear them? <clears throat> or do you want me to have it turned kind of down low where you can just barely faintly hear them like you do in the real airplane? We'll let that be y'all's call. We're going to run over these birds real quick. And let's fire up number two.
on my way on my midway delivery phase training almost complete nice this would be so cool if I get to talk to you on the radios one day <clears throat> how are the delays and cancellations due to the heat saw UK had to suspend some flights uh, I'm not sure to be honest I haven't been to work in the past uh, four days um, but I guess at least as of now, although it's early in the day, nothing. We probably would have, if there was something going on right now, we would have seen it on that OIS page, and we'll keep a, a watch on it during the day. There's still nothing going on yet. But, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. Alrighty, after start flow again. Engine mode sector normal. Reset rotor trim. Everything else is done. The other pump's already off. APU off after start checklist engine ice is off yellow electric pump is off road trim zero after start checklist is complete alrighty mini brief <clears throat> parting off runway 18 right our gross weight is 152.8 plan was 152.4 uh, fuel on board 23.3 flat fig 1 plus F V1 is 135 V2 is 150 flex 57 top altitude is 4,000 feet and our first fix is TYI flight controls check Full up, full down, neutral, full left, and full right. Oh, wrong button. Neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. And then the other pilot would do theirs. Sweet. Before start flow. I mean before takeoff flow. Flight tunes. Please be seated for departure. How's that? Sound? That sound cool. <laughs> God, we're all a bunch of nerds, right? All right. <clears throat> uh, I might go to the captain's side. I can't see the damn checklist. And can't see it over here either. I guess we'll just do it when we get short of the runway. Too bad we're not taking off into those showers. It looks kind of cool. That one straight ahead looks like a damn microburst. For any of you uh, bus simmers, you need help taxiing. You got the little window heat things. You got these little two little lines. Like if you put the taxiway line right on that, straight ahead. Before takeoff checklist, gross weight comparisons complete pitch trim is 28.4% CG set, V1, VR, V2, flex, 135, 148, 150, flex, 57, uh, flaps config 1 plus F, flight instruments are checked, flight controls are checked, ECMMO takeoff all green, ECMM status is checked, winter is on auto, take cast code set TARA, cabin crews advised, mini briefs complete, takeoff runway is runway 18, it's confirmed as we saw in the paint on the ground, fuel min required is 15.6. We've got uh, 23.2 on board. Uh, let's see. Engine mode selector is normal. And bleed packs are set. Before takeoff checklist is complete. Alright. Let's get them lights on. There we 
go. Myrtle traffic, Spirit Wings 1120 departing off from a 18 X in the airspace to the north. Myrtle. Alright, so runway heading <coughs> is 177. Alrighty, here we go. 50%. Man, flex, that's stretch from way out there's blue. knots that are set. Neutral by 100. Flaps up, speed checks, flaps up. Let's go direct, TYI, insert, and get this turn going before we get out into this stuff. Nav. I was supposed to have a haircut today. Whoops. Let's get the climb going. Let's get above this stuff. And we'll just keep it going to final. Myrtle traffic. Spirit wings 1120 is clear. Runway 18. Exit the airspace to the north. Myrtle.
See if we catch some bumps in this stuff. She likely would in real life. Why is the FS realistic comedy start? Realistic and realistically in real life this stuff wouldn't be probably the most fun to fly through. Little build ups like that. <clears throat> pretty pretty bumpy. Alright, comes ten thousand. Just bear with me guys, I'm trying to work this out with her. Because if I was supposed to have a haircut today, what is this? You've been assigned a task. Um, because if I was supposed to have a haircut today, then I've just cost her money. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure though, like we, I think we initially talked about today, but then we settled on the 27th, so I shouldn't have a haircut today. Definitely don't need one. <clears throat> Anyways, accelerating and climbing on out. Baby crying intensifies. Looks like a NATO spirit takeoff max power equals thirty five dollars. That's funny. So in the event, like let's say that we had um, we had a pretty big build up in front of us, and we wanted to to climb even faster. We can hit the expedite button, and when we do, that's going to drop the uh, the speed. It's going to tank the speed. It's going to allow the airplane, it's going to use all that speed to try to climb as fast as possible. Um, I kind of want to do it, but then packs may not like it, but whatever. I'm going to do it. Bow. See, now speed tanked. Airplane's going to pitch up. It's going to climb as fast as it can. And now we're climbing at 53, 54, 5,500 feet per minute. So if you need altitude fast, it's a good little button to hit. <clears throat> we had to do it whenever I was jump seating out of Memphis. We had a nice little uh, build up out in front of us. Wasn't sure if we're gonna get over it, so Captain hit the expedite button, and uh, we still weren't it. Wasn't able to clear it. All right, so now we can go back into managed climb. So now the airplane's going to nose down climb <clears throat> to allow itself to accelerate. Aircraft is accelerating back up to CI-99 speed. Then we'll do our first fuel check at TYI, which is 110 miles away. The secondary, we're going to clear the secondary out because we don't need it anymore. Trans 
position altitude. Rocking and rolling. So here's <clears throat> Rex Weather Force, and it is uh, detecting our location based off of whatever closest airport at the time that it ran. I've got it refreshing weather every five minutes, so it should pull new weather based off of our location every five minutes. It wants me to put in a flight plan at the <laughs> do a bell roll. It wants uh, wants me to put a flight plan in at the main menu but I'm afraid that that will mess with the nav system of the airplane it's like that's the best way to put in a flight plan for a lot of the default airplanes um, so I wish they had a feature in here where you could put the flight plan in in here instead of in the sim that's how active sky next does theirs and it works really well but um, but yeah and then you also, I've got some favorite airports I threw into here. I just kind of like to see the different extremes. So I've got Orlando, which is where I live, so it's always cool to see that. My hometown, Monroe. Vegas, because it gets super hot out there. And it's an online station, so uh, put that. Uh, i got Boston, because it's on the other side of the country, and it's north. See how cold it gets there in the wintertime. And then I've got uh, Glacier Park up in Montana. And Jackson Hole in Wyoming. See how cold it gets there during the wintertime. It's kind of fun to put those favorite airports. So, <clears throat> uh, we are expecting to... Oh, you know, I just had a thought. Perf. Y'all, I can go m minus on the perf factor. Too late now. Didn't do it on the next one. The issue I have with sim brief in this airplane is it drastically underburns, like a thousand pounds or more every single flight. It's not very realistic. So I need to figure out the fuel factor, which is AKA the perf factor. Um, so if the airplane, like engines, become a little too thirsty. You can always increase the perf factor, and that will compensate for that. And if you know you're underburning a lot, then you can go minus, and that will compensate for that. But I don't know how much to do it yet, so I'm gonna have to tinker with these numbers over time. But uh, I can't do it now because I would need to tell the software what our fuel on board is. Like at least plan it. We could block the fuel at 24.4, which is what we I think left with. We'd want to tell the software that, so it can still compensate correctly, and then show the correct burns at our waypoints, but can't do that with SimBrief, so. I wonder if I, like, get in touch with these guys and, like, yo, can we add some features like block fuel and, you know, some basic stuff. So back to the chat. 
The other thing I've experienced is how different the taxing is. You have to wait till you have to your halfway through the turn and then turn. Yeah. It's a long ass airplane. I bet that it's pretty hard to get used to. And the 320's fuselage is smaller than the GE90. That's crazy. Look at that. We got Boston Center online and we got Boston Approach. Isn't nice. Man, I tell you what, for a Tuesday afternoon, that's, that's a bit of activity. So we're going to be talking to likely to be Boston Center first at We're supposed to have. In fact, let's do this. See, in our airplanes, we've got these uh, little metal plates that have been mounted to the window of the airplane, and then you can take the mount and mount it to that plate. So you can still use the window shade with your uh, EFB still being mounted. And I wish that's something that Phoenix would do. I did send them a message about it on Discord. Didn't really get a whole lot of a response. <clears throat> oh, this is why I never do this, because I hate this format. Uh, TYI is supposed to have 18,700 pounds of fuel. We're 46 miles from TYI. Let's see, where is condition? Got a little bit chilly on the airplane, so we're going to taper that off a bit. first, Roebuck 3, uh, about to say, doesn't even apply to the runway we're planning to land on, arrival and approach to 7, and then ground charts, we want parking gates as well. Uh, so they're also landing. I guess we should probably look at. Well, they don't have Boston approach on there yet. Hmm. Well, Boston. Valanta shows that Boston Approach is on, but they're not in the list on, uh, maybe it's just we're not close enough yet. So I'll go ahead and look at the digital ADIS that way. 
I always forget about this though. We've got the digital datas here. If they're on. Yep. Bow. Adis information Charlie. I wonder if they're just mimicking the real life. Uh Adis Delta is current sixteen fifty four. Okay. So now they're not you're one letter behind. Uh three ten at sixteen goes two one, blah blah blah, two nine six six, two seven I left from a 2-7 approach and used departing room 8 3 left. Cool. So we will get 2-7. A while ago they were doing um, converging, landing on converging runways 2-7 and I think 3-3 left. I just want to set up something in the secondary in case we got the other. But good for now. Hope everybody's having a great Tuesday. Bill, I got all these damn dogs. Like they're all around me. They're like laying under my chair. So when I roll my chair, I hit them. But y'all get on the bed. Get on the bed. Get on the bed. Well, now Macy's in the way. Hang on, guys. Give me a quick sec. Cannot wait to get everything moved into the other room. Be a lot more room, I think. A lot less clutter. <laughs> Buzz the White House. That would be funny. I just like nose dive into their airspace. And then just climb back up. Alright, so we got TYI and 8 miles, whoever that is. No, I don't want to do that. Let's see. TYI. Who is TYI? Tar River. 18.7 is what we're supposed to have on board. And we got 19.5. So roughly. Just shy of a thousand pounds per usual. All right, so we are an alt cruise now. We is cruising. Rides have been pretty smooth, so we'll cut off that seatbelt sign. twice. So this leg, drinking energy drinks, coffee, probably a um, death water. I really like those death waters. And then after that,
Sorry guys, doing some work shit real fast. <clears throat> You can definitely tell with this manager stuff I'm going to be tied to my tied to my phone. Got a bunch of shit to read tonight. Yes, sir. Cruising the fly level. Tree five zero. Well, there ain't no trees. And we'll, uh. We'll get some good. action going. Give us a little something, something to watch. Other than just uh, us cruising around. Is there to bring up CDRs and sim brief.
So I kind of wonder if this is going to be the new regular that now slide into this whole little management deal that now, like I'm going to be checking my phone and doing some work stuff while we are streaming. Which probably not. Hey, what is this? Am I getting... Am I getting football for free on my phone? Louisville 2022 spring game. Hey, I can dig this. How many of y'all are college football fans? I'm big time college football. Look at that. I like guess it just came up. I just had accidentally swiped over. Watch Samsung TV Plus. Probably have to pay for that. Um, should, I need to check my emails. I got a whole bunch of stuff I need to read through. Tomorrow is my first day in the whole whatever the thing's called dispatch manager stuff. Um, I gotta go read some in doc. Stuff, bunch of stuff. I just, I, you know, I just want to like pass through life with very little effort. <laughs> and so, if any of y'all are wondering, since you haven't seen Hillbilly Gypsy in the uh, chat today, he and his wife. Uh, are at the hospital right now. Looks like his wife is getting ready to uh, pop a baby out. So, uh, our uh, our good luck wishes are with him and his wife. Hopefully, everything uh, goes smoothly and baby comes out nice and healthy, and the wife uh, doesn't have any issues. Hoping the best for him. <clears throat> oh, I shouldn't do you. You're fine. Definitely don't have to explain nothing. I do love college football as well. <laughs> West Virginia University. Come on, man. You gotta, you gotta get on with a team that's like, you know, worth something. If it ain't SEC, then you know what is it? It's not. It ain't, it ain't even nothing.
I win. Alright guys, <clears throat> got everything squared away. <laughs> the world is... The world is saved. <clears throat> I sent you one in the Discord yesterday, don't know if you saw that one. Was my... I have like, been so inactive on Discord lately. Let's see... Um, Hashim, what, where did you DM it to me, or did you put it in a channel? Because I'm not seeing it. I saw the one of your friend flying, or your friend landing, but I haven't seen the one you're talking about. <clears throat> Craddock, how's it going? Welcome aboard. Just in our uh, in our cruise phase of the flight, heading over to uh, Boston from Myrtle Beach, doing a little round trip tankering. We'll look and see if we can't. When we land, we're going to plan our next flight coming back and see if uh, see if we have enough gas on the airplane to go back to Myrtle Beach without having to take any gas. Um, so I think, guys, what I'm about to do real quick, I'm going to run to the bathroom and then we're going to take a look at the OFP and we're going to discuss um, the not just the different types of fuel but how it's gonna how it kind of plays a role in the paperwork um, and things that we can do to mitigate issues like gate returns a um, bunch of <clears throat> bunch of different things so give me a quick second go run to the bathroom real fast and then we're gonna talk about that
and we back. Looks like we're crossing over a. Oh my god. Frame rates though. Um. Let's see, we just crossed over SBY. What we got? SBY. So we have 16.6 on board. We got 17.6 on board. Thousand pounds. Kind of irritating to be honest. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk real quick about uh about fuel, the different types of fuel. Kind of building on what we were talking about earlier um, when we were planning this flight. sure y'all can see this all right so obviously in sim brief you got your whole fuel breakdown now <clears throat> when we're doing the before takeoff checklist you'll hear me say men require takeoff fuel is this fuel on board is this so when we talk about men require takeoff fuel men require takeoff fuel is very important and it encompasses of all the fuel that is required to be on the airplane when you enter the runway. So obviously it's going to be trip fuel so from A to B on the route that's planned on today that's 9,900 pounds of fuel gives us an hour and 37 minutes from wheels up to wheels down. Then our 45 minutes of reserve fuel which is uh, US FAR um, that's going to be 3.6. Then the fuel that we plan for contingencies. So we're planning fuel for um, you know, possible turbulence and we're starting to kind of get up in that area where there, there might could be some turbulence although I didn't see any forecasted in the uh, FPGs um, but uh, crossing a, a cold front typically you're going to have some level of turbulence so we got some extra gas for that and for arrival rate I'm kind of glad we planned it too because now you know Boston Center is online um, I think Boston still not showing not close enough yet but um we got Boston approach on and Boston ground on and there's a ton of traffic up there it looks like yeah there's a bunch of a bunch of people so uh, glad we got that extra gas so that's our 20 minutes <clears throat> about 2,000 pounds of fuel on average Airbus is gonna burn around a thousand pounds I mean a hundred pounds a minute rather um, so 20 minutes gives you about 20,000 or 2,000 pounds of fuel so all of this equals this men require takeoff fuel we have to have this amount to take off now let's say that like ATC just gave us a big ass reroute and it's eating up you know a lot of extra gas um, that's going to make this number higher and so if we're if we don't have all this you know tanker fuel that we're carrying today um, we could potentially be really close if not below the main takeoff fuel so uh, you know let's say that like this number went up to uh, 16,000 and we've got 15.9 on board well now we can't take off because we're below the main takeoff so one thing we could do as dispatchers is we can either lower or completely remove this 20 minutes of fuel you know, say so like we kind of reassess we look and like all right you know it doesn't look like there's any pie reps there's no FPGs up there uh, where we thought there's gonna be turbulence so we can we can remove this 20 minutes of fuel and so by taking this out it would essentially move whatever's left after the reroute down to below the line so it put it down here in the extra and it would make this number smaller and hopefully get it low enough that would still be able to enter the runway before reaching that amount and be able to take off and avoid a gate return if <clears throat> we can't get that number if we can't get the men required takeoff fuel low enough compared to what's on the airplane um, then we would have to return the gate and go get more gas and this does happen from time to time um, usually it's going to be because of reroutes it's probably the, the most common like very very excessive reroutes issued by ATC um, 
and often those are issued like after the flight is planned uh, and usually too that's going in or out of the northeast <clears throat> um, so then you got extra fuel or slash tanker fuel which is all below the line so all this fuel being that it's below the line and when I say the line I'm talking about men require takeoff fuel so kind of imagine this blue line as the line so everything up here up north of the line is required everything below is not so we got our our extra fuel and again today we're obviously we're tankering so we've got 7,300 pounds of extra gas which comes out to an hour and nine minutes and just from how long this flight is taking to get to Boston which is an hour and a half and we've only got an hour and nine minutes of extra gas um, plus we'll be landing with at least the 45 so we're gonna be we're probably not gonna have enough gas to to be able to round trip we're gonna have to take a little bit of fuel in uh, in Boston but uh, so we got this 7,300 pounds of fuel that can be used for whatever it does not have to be on the airplane to take off if we somehow burned 7,000 pounds on the taxi out then nobody cares it would, would kind of suck to have to take off without that fuel but you know it might come in handy later on for all we know you never know you never know what's gonna happen in a flight <clears throat> so we got our uh, extra fuel or tanker fuel however you want to call it since we are tankering on this flight next <clears throat> next flight we will not be tankering um, then you got our taxi fuel taxi fuel um, is just like extra fuel you know obviously it's planned for the taxi um, I'd have to do some math but I would imagine this should be planning this where all of this taxi fuel is calculated as being burned on the taxi out um, and not included in the planned takeoff fuel um, and really on our OFPs at my at my company we don't even see this like this planned takeoff fuel doesn't even like it's not on the paperwork at all um, it's just men take off extra in taxi fuel um, but the software should calculate the the men take off with all of this burned off but if it's not burned off whatever excess of the taxi fuel is left would theoretically go into the extra fuel and it can be burned for whatever later on so you know if we're anticipating departure delays out of Boston and we plan like 1500 pounds of taxi fuel but they only burn 500 pounds like whatever issue was causing departure delays that issue goes away and they only burn 500 pounds on the on the taxi out well now they've got an extra thousand that they can use airborne so um, we are planned to land with roughly 13,000 pounds of gas when we get there um, so if we weren't going to take any extra fuel it might would be enough um, so just between these two if, if the burns are somewhat similar coming back 9.9 plus 3.6 I'm not even going to try to do mental math on stream 13.5 so already we have to get at least 500 pounds of uh, fuel to come back to have that 45 minute reserve that's required to be on the airplane and that's also not including any taxi fuel um, if there's any contingencies coming back we've got a plan for that so we're still gonna have to take a little bit of gas but not nearly as much as we would have to have to get if we weren't tankering in so that's kind of your fuel breakdown and again the most important number and when I talk about the line that's men take off so everything above the line is required to be on the airplane when you take the runway and that's why it's part of the checklist so as we're coming up on the runway you'll hear me say men require takeoff fuel is 15.6 and we've got da 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 on board so you just want to make sure that whatever is on board is more than your men takeoff otherwise you got to go back to the gate and go get some gas got that uh top of descent in view let's check this what what the hell is the problem with my frame rates now let's just kind of dumb all this down I don't know why huh 
Boston approaches on 133.0. Center's 34.7. Cool. All right, let's check this out. What the? What is the deal? Why? Is it, are we just over some really I mean, we're over Washington ish I don't know why we're we getting these uh, frame rate issues if it's uh if Rex is doing any of this let's let's try something oh my god this is so bad yeesh figured that was gonna happen So yeah, uh, I think Rex was causing all of that. Cause now it's buttery smooth. Thanks, Rex. You suck. It was it was a valiant attempt. Okay. My God. AOC menu receive messages in KS Ops. And I don't care about you, shut up. So now, real quick, let's kind of, let's just get some info thrown in here for the arrival. Or the approach. Um, Two eighty at 14, gust 20. I really wish they would make this where you could print this stuff out. Three three two nine six four. Damn, really? Must be the cranes. So minimums are 443 feet off the ground. Sweet. Now, we'll come over here. We'll set up our range ring. Let's go K-Boss. Now, there's another reason why I like the Airbus, because the 737, it'll do range rings, but it can't do the range ring off of the actual runway itself. So Boston, 27. It's the range ring of five nautical miles. And then we're going to tab over. In fact, we'll just use the chart. Let's go Oak Deck. That's a weird O Q D E K. Drop that in. And then we're going to go to the airport chart, airport diagram. So the opposite of 27 is, you can barely see that, 092. This is going to draw out our center line. Now we should have that.
looks good to me. So I'm kind of glad I looked at this. Uh, this is going to cross whatever that is. Hope do at 5,000 feet, but then AB is at 6,000 feet. So we're going to go Hope do K lane. Granted, we're going to make controlled airspace a little vector us anyways. <coughs> but it's definitely something we want to be mindful of. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out so we don't get any issues with uh, with our VNAV profile. There we go. So now it's removed. 5,000, then greater than or at or above 4,000. So wait. All right, to the chat. <clears throat> Didn't list myself to fly in the classic queen, but they got retired. And then fly the person two numbers ahead of me was... Ah, oh, wow. That's crazy. Do you think Rex weather is better than Microsoft Flight Sim weather? I would love to see more accurate weather than with higher tops and turbulence. Well, I was, I was kind of hopeful for it. Um... But it looked like it was causing some sort of frame rate issues, as you just saw. So, uh, based off of that, I would say no. Not worth it. Hey, hello. Yeah, I guess we're getting pretty close. I feel like these guys tell you to contact them, like, way sooner than over New York right now. I'm gonna turn the virtual cabin back on. Yeah, I guess we will. I'm just uh, kind of thinking Boston might be a little heavy on the frames when we get there. We'll turn it on for now. Contact them. Boston Center Spirit Wings, eleven twenty, is uh, eighteen miles southwest of JFK, flight level three five zero. Experience 1120 Boston Center, hello, squawk 4702. 4702 on the squawk, Spirit Wings 1120. Boston Center, good evening or good day. Uh, Avelo 99 Charlie on requesting FI Kilims destination in Myrtle Beach. Avelo 98 Charlie Boston Center, hello. Uh, I do not control that airport, that's New York's airport. That sector currently is offline. Actually, uh, you know what, let me check. Maybe someone else is controlling it. One second. New York approach. Center, can you write an step away for like three minutes? Hey, let this guy do his work. People don't listen. United 1855, approved. Straight range 1120, radar contact, 15 miles southwest of Kennedy. Just set to maintain photo with 270. Down 270, Spirit Wings 1120. Frontier Flight 515 leaving my airspace. New York Center is closed. Radar service terminated. Frequency change approved. Take care. Frequency change approved. Frontier Flight 515. Thank you. Polaris 484 leaving my airspace. New York Center is closed. <coughs> and uh, Unicom for now. Have a good day. Avello 38 Charlie, uh, the New York approach controller currently does not cover that sector, so they can depart on Unicom and it can call me when you're at 10,000 feet. All right, let's brief the approach real quick. Okay, about to get busy. Thank you. Boston Center, Jeffrey Trust 1271 on the ground at Worcester Regional Airport, requesting IFR to Kennedy. 
So Blue 1271 Boston Center, clear to the New York Kennedy Airport via radar vectors Norwich, then as filed, climb and maintain 3000, expect... Alright, so we're going to be shooting the uh, ILS runway 27. Frequency is 111.3, final approach course 272. Final approach fix is rip it at 1700 feet. Decision height off the ground is 443. Touchdown zone elevation 17 feet. Uh, we got a standard 3 degree glide slope. Approach lights popping on the left. 3000 on the uh, mist. On the uh, Boston VOR to. Yeah, the uh, 268 radio Delta on the Boston nine, six, VOR two, one, to Bossix. Um, shoot this approach, we need 443 feet on, feet on the ceilings, mile and a half now. visibility. Okay, we got that, weather is totally fine. Southwest 2491 space into Chicago, maintain Mark point seven six point for about five minutes. Good God. Uh, let's see, 27. Three on 1120, clear direct Roebuck, descend and maintain, thought about 230. 230 on the altitude and clear direct Roebuck, Spirit Wings 1120. Direct Roebuck. This is November Bravo Sierra 127, radio check. Not I like it. Watson Center, are you currently covering Bradley International? Uh, yes. Alright, <clears throat> back to the brief. Uh, high intensity runway lights, center line lights, approach lights, Pappy on the left. It's 30 degrees, it's grooved, RBR's reporting. November, problem 017. And I request for pushback. Um. From the glide slope, we've got 5,950 feet of usable runway, 150 feet wide. November Bravo, Sierra 127. Uh, let's see, I'm going to send you a route to follow. Let me know uh, if when we you land, can program this route, and if you can, do that, and then call me back. Hopefully, we'll turn off by I'm Echo. Text and just start programming that. Otherwise, we'll have to land can. and hold short. Uh, 2-2 two -two left. Well, they're not doing anything on 2-2 two -two left, so it should be fine. Could probably roll out to the end. And Center America 92 to 2 Heavy. Can we step away for about five minutes? Well, we'll plan to try to get off by Echo. Approved. And not sure what our landing gate is yet. We should be getting an ACARS on the gate. So we're going to go auto brake medium. It is an ILS. We're going to on those ILS push buttons. And the brief is complete. Thank you. Also, just sent you the full approach chart for that mountain approach if you're ever in the mood. Roger that. Looks like I got it. Sweet. We'll definitely take a look at that. Descent at possible stretch, maintain level 240. Does anyone else <laughs> double check FPs before going before they go out to the crew? When you say uh, double check FPs, you mean flight plans? So here, hello, how's it going? Sorry for uh, the late response. We get a little busy sometimes flying the airplane doing our briefings and such but nonetheless welcome aboard hope uh, you enjoy your stay here at the wrong side simulations channel chase nice got your little mini EFB coming that's cool I've got like 10 of my colleagues hooked on your streams they appreciate the realism I've been catching them watching Sage. that's that's pretty cool man I appreciate that thank you so much that is awesome. Glad they're enjoying it. I mean, obviously, I'm not a real world pilot, and I think that's kind of what I think. That's kind of I, I, I think my streams kind of fit in a in a cool like realm in the flight sim community. So obviously, you've got real world pilots like V1 simulations and three 
320 sim pilot and who else flight deck to sim like those guys they're real world dudes so like you know they know the airplanes and they can kind of give like you you expect more realism from them because they are the real thing then you got like casual simmers like xp and blue and shack and whoever else but then you've got mine where i work in aviation um i do technical aviation things but i'm not a real world pilot and i've got like some of the pilot type training from dispatch school and company uh aircraft systems training and that kind of stuff but i'm not a real world real world pilot so i think that's what's kind of cool with with my channel is that i, I can kind of show like even though one may not be a real world pilot, just how how in depth simmers can get if they you know really buckle down to try to learn you know the aircraft. Um, so I always thought that was one reason why I wanted to stream was I have that to offer. Where it's like yo, I'm not a real pilot, but like we're doing checklists and flows and and briefings and that kind of stuff. So like even though others may not be real pilots you can very easily kind of learn this stuff too now I do get a little more insight just because I am you know a flight dispatcher and I do get some training on aircraft systems and that kind of stuff but honestly like the the aircraft systems training that we do like is nothing remotely close to even just like jumping into the simulator and flying around what we got coming up below 260. Okay. Um, and I get to jump seat, and, you know, I get to see the real thing, which definitely helps, but I feel like there's not anything that I'm seeing from the jump seat that others couldn't YouTube and learn from. So, I think it's, I think my channel's kind of cool in that aspect that I can offer a little bit more context, even though I'm not a real world pilot let's go ahead and tune up the next frequency which is going to be Boston approach how the cursor just disappears after a few seconds. They're not moving the mouse around. Yeah, 1855 descend via the J fund to arrival, runway 27, Boston altimeter 29064. Send by the J fund 2, we're expecting that was for 27 and altimeter 2964 for United States. Bearings 1120 descend via the Roebuck 3 arrival, runway 27, Boston altimeter 29064. To send the Roebuck 3 arrival, we'll expect runway 27 and uh, 2964 on the altimeter spirit wings 1120. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. <clears throat> it's the best mix. I'll try my best to show you around the 777 if we ever meet in Chicago fingers crowd <laughs> sounds good I doubt they would let me down to the airplane without being booked on the flight but I could always try to zed fare book myself on the flight come down and look around and then just be like ah hey gate agent you know what I'm not going I just uh, wanted to go go hang out for a bit but that would be super cool I've actually never flown on the 777 um, American Airlines runs the 777 I don't know if they're still doing it, but they were doing it from Miami to, to Dallas every day. So I wanted to do that, but I just never got around to it. And, and Americans jump seat listing procedures like Walker, kind of pain in the ass. Climb, maintain, five, double, three, four, zero. climb, maintain, follow three four zero. Climb, maintain, follow three four zero. Walker twenty four sixty two. See you, Chase. Appreciate you, buddy. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
Delta 961, resume normal speed. Normal speed, Delta 961. Thank you, sir. Southwest 2491, normal speed. Normal speed, Delta 2491. Okay, uh, let's try this route then. Sorry, the, the second one. Let me know if you can do the, the second route there. Bam. Gotta get in that little, uh, Little announcement, little PA announcement. Boston Center, Chapel Hill, Sony One on the ground at Worcester, ready for taxi. Chapel Hill, Sony One, runway two nine, taxi via Bravo Alpha, cross runway two nine. Taxi two nine via Bravo Alpha, cross two nine for Chapel Hill, Sony One. <coughs> At our company, the jump seat priority is up to the captain, then the first officer, so it's way easier. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's like, for for American, we have to go on a website and list. And if, like, so if I say, if I, if I take my company from, I don't know, Lauderdale to Dallas, and then I'm already behind, like, I'm inside security, like, I'm at the gate, and I go to the gate to fly American... They like they struggle with the jump seat, and like they go to scan me on board, and I'm like, oh, it says you didn't pay for your ticket. I'm like, yeah, because I'm a, I'm a jump seater. It's free. American ninety two zero two. And so contact, I have to list one, with them uh, at the ticket counter. So essentially, I would have to like land in Dallas, go outside security, go to the ticket yeah, counter, finish the whole listing process with them, then go back through security. Delta nine sixty one. And uh, center, one, one, nine, then they're like, it'll all day. work. And then once I'm on the airplane, if there's a seat open in the back, they won't let me ride in the front. Most of the time. Unless you get a really cool captain, they're going to make me ride in the back no matter what. So. I don't usually uh, jump seat on American unless I can help it. Just because uh, I have, I've always had some issues with them. Have a good day. Envoy 1122, descend and maintain 11,000, Syracuse altimeter 2907. Okay, down to 11,000, Syracuse altimeter 2907, or curse 2907. What's up, sir? Hello, Delta 1 Papa Romeo, Mike Bell, who's with you? Delta 1 Papa Romeo, Boston Center, hello, squawk 4706. 4706. Hello to my papa, radar contact, one five miles north of Beads, clear direct MJ, climb and maintain flight level 380. Direct MJ and clear flight level 380 to my papa. Spray range 1120, contact Boston approach, 133.0, have a good day. 133.0, we'll talk to you later, Spirit Wings 1120. Delta Two, 1 Papa six, Romeo, radar four. contact, 20 miles southwest of Kennedy, maintain flight level 230. Boston Radar, good afternoon. This is uh, Velo 8470, passing 11, climb 180. There we go.
Avello 8, cool. Fox is here, Boston Center. Hello, Squawk 4751. Alright, then we're going to do ground. Awesome grounds, 21 9. Boston approach. Spirit Wings 11 20 crossing Pro V 16 3 with uh, information Delta. Delta is current, the altimeter 2964. Expect the ILS runway uh, 27 first. We'll expect the ILS 27. We've got uh, info Delta on board for Spirit Wings 11 20. United 1470 radar contact, say altitude. Uh, 2.1 for 5000, 1470. At 1470, thanks. Climb the maintain 14,000. Up to 14,000, United, United 1470. American 241, wind 270 at 14, gust 20, runway 33 left, clip for takeoff. Oh, yeah, it, it absolutely is. <clears throat> There's been a few times that I've gotten right up front with um, some pilot buddies of mine that just happened that they were flying the flight that I was jump seating on, so it's always really cool. Like, I'm at my company, we have to fill a little slip. So I'd be at the gate filling out the slip and then look up, see the captain walking up. And I was like, ah, oh, Brandon or whoever. Um, yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun riding with a crew that you know. Ah, gotcha. Alright, so let's get that approach checklist. Alright, approach checklist. Briefing's complete, approach stable by 1,000 feet. Ecom status. Is checked. Seabill signs are on. Minimums 443 set. Engine ice 1 and 2 are off. And altimeters 2964 set. Approach checklist complete. Yeah, that's a lot of different types. I kind of feel like that's that's like Delta Airlines. They got so many different types. I think it's a little chaotic as far as the logistical side of things go. So, Hashim, do y'all have flight dispatchers at your company, or um, is it mostly automated? I've heard that most of that kind of stuff over like overseas is very automated I know like Europe is very very automated they use a lot of Lido Lufthansa Lido systems uh, to kind of take the dispatcher out of the game for the most part um, so do y'all have dispatchers and like are they required to flight follow like that, that kind of stuff it's for us obviously we're required to be here thanks to the FAA uh, we do the flight planning we also flight follow and advise the crew of any any issues up ahead this thing's flying so low. 250 till Cleb. Let's go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if um, U.S. carriers could fire and get rid of the dispatchers, they would probably do that the very next day it was approved. Dispatchers cost airlines a lot of money. The safety position usually paid pretty well. And uh, 
unionize and that kind of stuff. So if they could get rid of us right away, I'm sure they would. And that's what we're all kind of afraid of is that at some point automation is going to take over and, and the FA is like, eh, automation is good enough now. We don't need dispatchers. And then we're gone. And if that happens, then I'll go to railroad dispatch. Foster for genetic 1855. Boston Post, November 9, Delta Fox, level at 5000, and we have Delta for Boston. November 9, Hotel Fox, drop off approach to Boston, altimeter 2964, expect the ILS runway 27 approach. 2964, and expect the ILS 27 approach, 9 Delta Fox. So, we're not going to have a whole lot of runway on this one so definitely don't want to float and if we're trying to stop by echo then really don't want to float <clears throat> our company does give us free iPads damn every year shit I think uh, I've been at my company for five years I'm on my second EFB uh, but they upgraded the entire company all at the same time pilot group and dispatchers we all got new EFBs. They're all the same exact, same exact ones as the uh, ones we had before. They were just a little newer. They're all the, it's the old school iPads with the push button. All right, below ten, get them lights on. We have begun our final descent into Boston. Flight attendants will be passing through the cabin to collect any trash one final time. Please ensure tray tables are stowed and seats are in the full upright position. Please also store any carry-on items either in the seat back pocket or under the seat in front of you. Yeah, I would imagine those EFB mods are probably kind of shitty. Probably old school and outdated. If I had to guess, I've never even seen or messed with one. Remember, zero Charlie Delta, fly heading 270, wind 270 at 14, gust 20, runway 33, left, clear for takeoff. 270 on the heading runway 33, left, clear for takeoff, zero Charlie Delta. Yeah, Dustin, that's the same uh that's the same debate that we always have at work all the time. Automation being hacked or not not working, something like that. Not necessarily like pilotless airplanes, but just dispatchers going away in general. Three sixty on the heading down to four thousand, and uh, vectors for the ILS two seven approach. Spirit wings eleven twenty. Four. Nope. Three sixty. Let's go two ten.
So that's why I love having that center line. You can always see where the runway center line is at. Just makes life a little more organized. Down 2000, Spirit Wings 1120. Number zero, Charlie Delta, radar contact, fail. Passing through 1000, zero, Charlie Delta. Number zero, Charlie Delta, thanks. Uh, proceed direct to Rev, climb the main team, 14000. Direct to Rev, that's a 14000, zero, Charlie Delta. Man, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Ten years and then retiring the airplanes. That's that's wild. Yeah, I would. I, me personally, I would prefer the iPad myself. I feel like the iPad probably just functions a bit better instead of like, like I don't know. Everybody knows an iPad. It's got good like sensitivity and refresh rate and that kind of stuff. So on the way back, we're going to try to make this as a quick turn as much as possible. So we'll plan the flight quickly, see uh, how much additional fuel we'll have to take, and then uh, get rolling on back, back down to Myrtle. Three zero zero join the localizer spirit wings eleven twenty. Look star. Sixteen miles out. Look. Clean cleared, ILS uh, 27 approach, and uh, what was the speed again? 190 or zero knots or greater. 190 or greater, Spirit Wings 1120. Alright, so let's, uh, let's change this real quick to. We'll go six miles. There says a little bit more room to slow down. Boston Fresh Dock, one, two, five, four, five, eleven and a half miles to the northwest of Hanscom. We'll get into the Number one, two, five, four, five, Boston approach, enter a right downwind runway two nine. -er. Right downwind two nine, one, two, five, four, five. Spurring full eleven twenty, maintain one seven zero knots or greater until rip it. 170 or greater until rip it. Spare wings 1120. Spare wings 1120, contact tower 12818. 
121.9, correct? 128.8. Ah, uh, got to have ground in there. 128.8 for uh, Spirit Wings 1120. Have a great day. And 128.8. And then grounds be 21 none. Delta 1830 Boston Tower, hello, cross runway 27 on Charlie. Cross 27 on Charlie, Delta 1830. Boston Tower, Spirit Wings 1120, ILS 27. Spirit Wings 1120, Boston Tower, hello. The winds are 280 at 14, gust 20, runway 27, Quiddleland, traffic crosses, zero runway, and then traffic will hold in position on the crossing runway. Cover that, clear to land, ILS 27, Spirit Wings 1120. All right, 170. So rip it. There's rip it. Make sure we're in activated approach phase. That would have been bad. Manage speed, gear down, spoilers armed, flaps three. We've been cleared to land. 1830 runway, three, three left, line up and wait. Traffic will land the crossing runway. And flaps full. Alrighty, landing checklist. Cap cruise advised. Arthur speed. Auto brakes medium. Ecam landing all green. Landing checklist complete. Be stable by a thousand. What the shit? One thousand. What? <laughs> v Spirit's been hacked. Uh great. Have no gate info now. <clears throat> It's a great place to put a damn air wind turbine right next to frickin' airport. Hundred above. Five hundred. Minimum. Continue. Four hundred. Delta 1830, winds 28014, gust 20, runway 33 left, cleared for takeoff. Runway 33 left, cleared for takeoff, Delta. And there goes Echo. Runway 1120, welcome to Boston, right turn kilo, contact ground point 9. Right turn kilo, ground point 9, Spirit Wings 1120. And, and there's uh, kilo. Spirit Wings 1120, hold turn runway 4 left, and contact ground there. Hold short for left. Contact ground. Point nine. Spear wings level twenty. Welcome to Boston. The local time is two forty-seven p.m. and it's currently about ninety-one degrees Fahrenheit. You it's cannot use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bins as items may have shifted during the flight. We thank you for flying with us and we hope to see you. Okay, eighteen thirty. Contact Boston departure. Bye bye.
Tower, UPS 1017, heavy just crossed for right. Delta 1750 Boston Tower, hello, cross on 27 on Charlie. I'm gonna hold it right cross here. Cross 27 on Charlie, Delta 1750. They're cleaned up. UPS 1017, heavy cross on 27 on Charlie. Let's go. Delta 1830, contact Boston, departure, bye bye. All right, uh, let's see, after landing, exterior light set, flaps retracted, TCAS standby, engine mode selectors normal, ground spoilers disarm, radar protection is off. After landing, completes. Now. Ball stand ground. Spirit Wings 1120 holding short for left at Kilo. Wings 1120 Boston ground, good afternoon. Welcome to Massachusetts. Uh, where are you uh, headed to parking? Well, it looked like, uh... I, I kid you not, it looks like Russia kind of hacked our ACAR, so I don't have any gate info, so wherever you want to send me, I'll take. All right, Spirit Wings 1120, I'll make it easy for you. Cross four left on Kilo, right turn Alpha to the Bravo Gates, and have a good evening. All right, we're going to cross uh, four left at Kilo, and Alpha, uh, right on Alpha to the Bravo Gates. Spirit Wings 1120, thanks, sir. One Golf X-ray on Charlie, cross runway four right, hold short of runway 27. Rush one runway four right. We'll try to two seven. One golf X-ray. One golf X-ray crossing four right. You can monitor tower one two eight point eight and have a great flight. Monitoring tower. Monitoring tower one two eight point eight for one golf X-ray. Thank you. Boston ground, good afternoon, Delta 2082 with you uh, with information Delta IFR to Orlando. Delta 2082, Boston ground, good afternoon, your clearance on request, expect PDC momentarily. Roger for Delta 2082. Parking gates. Shut down two. And let's see if we can find somewhere to park. Let's come straight over here next to United. Pal to the pow pow. Shutting down one. Frame rates are definitely a little bit hard here in Boston. Cool. We're going to turn this sucker out pretty quick. External power and shut down the APU. Uh, oh my god. Why would you want to do that? Atsu. AOC menu. Received. Arrival. I'm going to take a picture of this and send it to. Number 1178 Foxtrot. Uh, unfortunately, the airport is not doing pattern work at this point in time. Check, copy. And let's go Discord. 
I'm gonna send this to them real quick. Um. Delta 44, ready to cross runway four left. Well, Delta 44, I told you to go to runway or taxiway Charlie. You're at Echo. Sorry about that. Going to Echo. Well, you're on Echo. Are you able to get to Charlie now, or do you need to go ahead and cross? There's some support. Delta 484, very good. On uh, Echo, cross runway 4 left. Left turn Mike, right turn Charlie, hold short of 4 right. Delta 484, I need you to read that back, please. All right, let's uh, silence them. that up all right so let's just run a little quick debrief real fast and then we'll start working our way back uh, so let's go flights uh, I guess I never planned a call sign that's cool uh, so we touched down at negative 144 we floated quite a bit um, surprised we don't have hot brakes right now uh, with being 91 degrees outside and stopping as fast as we did but negative 144 I'll definitely take that especially as uh, as uh, short as we stopped. Submit our power up. No, let's go. Submit the power up on a pilot's life. Let's see what we scored on there. Submit power up V Spirit. And also flew this with Shaq's airline. that file as well. Noise. Um, cool, so we're going to get ready to head back. Alright, so I'm going to kind of get everything just reset real quick. Everybody take a quick little uh, bathroom break if you need to. I'm going to get the overlay, all that kind of stuff. Get everything just reset. And then we're going to get back at it. We'll chat so Oh! I look too late. Spirit parks at gates. Bravo 35, 37. Where are we at now? Uh, we are close. 27. I see spirit planes over there. Thank you, Dustin. Maybe I couldn't look up fast enough. <clears throat> Alright. Be right back with you guys. Give me just a few.
full-fledged storming outside didn't even know it the trash can ran or the trash guy ran today so we got the trash can outside trash can sitting out in the rain like lid open pouring water so had to run outside and uh, pulled that back in <clears throat> I was out there it's like thundering and all sorts of shit had no clue I'm so tied into this I had no idea what the weather was doing outside but it is officially like mid-afternoon so that means it's beer time next landing might be a little rough ladies and gentlemen as your captain is drinking beer so I'm gonna turn my face off for this one we're gonna get a little more in depth since it is afternoon time Dustin you know what this is uh, and you could probably do a lot better of a job than me but um, let's dispatch this flight real quick and get going all right so Boston to Myrtle flight 738 on the same aircraft uh, we're gonna fly this one a little bit slower CI 16 and uh, departure time of 1945 Zulu <clears throat> hopefully get out a little bit sooner than that uh, right so Boston let's refresh their ATIS and info Fox is current Windsor 280 at 12 gust and 23 other than that good weather 2964 still current and they are departing off runway 33 left we got 33 left in the box uh, let's update this for Myrtle uh, at our ETA so 1945 2045 21 15 21 30 so we'll be in this line at our ETA so winds are 230 at 11 gusting 18 greater than six miles vicinity thunderstorms scattered at 5,000 with cumulus clouds uh, hour before we're also going to be in this so we're trying to determine our if we need an alternate right now uh, so to again building on previous episodes of our little flight planning series um, one hour before and one hour after your ETA less than 2,000 foot ceilings less than three statute miles visibility require an alternate <clears throat> uh, so hour before winds 240 at 10 greater than 6 vicinity thunderstorms broken at 45 CB's uh, does not require an alternate based off of that and then also hour after which would be 22 Z so we're back in this line again still don't require an alternate but we got vicinity thunderstorms plus some gusty wind so we're definitely going to take an alternate uh, we'll have to figure out what alternate we're going to use though <clears throat> so we'll keep that in the back of our minds we need an alternate probably going to be Atlanta maybe I don't know we'll, we'll see what the weather's looking like um, <clears throat> after that let's see so we got winds are 230 240 mm, it's gonna be a crosswind um, cool so we'll just go with runway 18 be kind of a straight in approach if we need to we'll swing her back around on to uh, on the other side but taxi out fuel uh, taxi and get a little a little weird in Boston so let's let's go 30 minutes on that because it takes us a minute to get to the cause it, they're parting off 33 left so we're gonna be crossing some shit and much taxi instructions whatever we got our 10 minutes of fuel below the line altitude we're leaving auto contingency we're gonna leave um, actually let's we'll go ahead and throw on 30 minutes of extra gas for the thunderstorms uh, 18 passenger four one seven. sweet so let's go ahead and just generate this real quick and then we'll switch over to our weather map KMYR. Go. I wish enter would work. <clears throat> Alright, so we got the. It's kind of hard to see, but we do have the route overlaid. Um, and so we got some. We got an FPG for probably light occasional. What is it? Yeah, light occasional moderate turbulence flight level 300380. We're going to be in that. It's due to horizontal wind shear. Again, we're going to be crossing these two fronts. Got a stationary front and a cold front. That might be what's re what's causing some of this, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and then, yeah, look at this. Coming into Myrtle, we got little isolated, scattered cells all over the place already. Uh, they are reporting uh, lightning distant to the northwest. 
in the METAR. <coughs> so not only is it forecasted, but the conditions already exist. So, uh, you know, kind of takes that guesswork out for you. And uh, definitely put an alternate. Now, as alternates go, obviously we want to go somewhere that's like not going to also be getting our ass kicked with thunderstorms. Charlotte may not be the best bet. Maybe Raleigh. Raleigh looks kind of far. It's, it's got this trough linger, and so there might be some cells spawn off of Raleigh. I mean, off the trough. Um, anything further to the west just kind of looks like you're starting to get into a lot of this this nastiness. So north, northeast-ish is probably going to be the best direction to go. Again, we could look at that uh, coast bug in just to kind of see what what it thinks as far as its algorithm. Nope, that is notums. And uh, it'll give us an idea. So if we depart roughly the next hour, we've got Myrtle down here. So, yeah, so it should, based off of this, Charlotte or Raleigh should be good. Raleigh's probably the better choice. Looks like it's kind of more in the clear area. So let's take a uh, quick look at Raleigh's TAF. And TAF looks good. ETA will be roughly around there. So we're going to put Raleigh on. Before we do, let's just kind of look and see what it gave us. We're pretty light with 116 passengers. So it's got us going up to 38,000 feet. Uh, we got our, where's it at? We got our 10 minutes of extra fuel. We got our 30 minutes of dispatch ad for the vicinity thunderstorms. So not only would we anticipate possible holding because of possible thunderstorms over the field, but also you're going to have to deviate around some storms during descent. So 30 minutes could possibly put even more. Um, if we had to put a really far alternate, then that would affect our hold field. We may not be able to get as much hold field as we want, but Raleigh's not too far away. So we should be able to tack on a little bit more if we need to. Let's go edit flight. And uh, let's go through on Raleigh. I don't know why it does that. It doesn't take it the first time. There we go. Analyze the route. Got it. That's kind of a dumb route. We'll probably fly something a little more direct. So if we want to change that routing, we can. Let's just throw in some nav aids. There we go. Boom. A little more direct. A little more realistic. What they probably fly might be a few deviations depending on the weather. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so Raleigh's not too far. That's, what, 132 nautical miles. So let's tack on just a little bit more on the contingency fuel. So right now we've got a total of 40 minutes with our fuel below the line. Let's go. We'll go 35. It gives us a total of 45 minutes. Should suffice. Rods were pretty smooth on the way in. So I anticipate it's going to be pretty smooth on the way out. So now it's got us at 36. Hour 46. And what's the winds doing? And we start catching a little bit of a headwind the further south we get. Alright, so we're going to do... I think I like it. Obviously, there's no arrival rate for Myrtle. Myrtle is super small, so we're not worried about that. Let's check the OIS page real quick. And Orlando, wow, second tier ground stop for uh, weather and thunderstorms. Now, the tiers are a little interesting. Um, let's pull up. Oh, we got Coast Bell already. And let's go. How do I add? Oh well. I need. I want to explain what these tiers are. Now 
Can I not turn on the centers? Weird. Anyway, so for ooh, yeah, look at this. Oof, law. Yeah. Orlando's I'm about to get sucker punched. Let's just see what Orlando is right now. One sixty at nine, ten statue miles, thunderstorms scattered at forty four, CBs broken fifty five, broken twenty five thousand, temperatures thirty four, dew point twenty three, altimeters thirty oh six, lightning distance in the southwest and north thunderstorms, frequent lightning in cloud, cloud of ground, southwest, northwest, thunderstorms, da -da 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 -da, it's just shit everywhere. So good thing we're not flying into Orlando. I mean it wouldn't really matter, it's like a two hour flight if we were doing that, but we're not. Uh, right, so 360, we got our fuel. Cool. Oh, yeah, I want to change the perf factor. Let's go. Let's just try minus 10, see what that does. So let's go ahead and pre-file this. I like it. We'll go 360. Pilot brief doesn't have centers. At least, ah, maybe they should turn them on. Um, does Belanta show centers? Not if they're not active. Dang it. So basically the way that the tiers work for the OIS page is so you've got so Orlando's in Jacksonville Center. So a first tier would be any center that touches Jacksonville Center. Because it's basically one center away, I guess is the way to think about it. Second tier is gonna be two centers away. So I don't know if we're going like Atlanta would be after Atlanta, like I don't know. I can't. I can't picture it in my brain. But basically, two centers away. If if the if the center is two centers away from Jacksonville Center, then that would be you'd be caught in the ground stop. You wouldn't be able to depart. Damn. Minneapolis is in a first tier ground stop for wind. What's their wind? Two twenty at twenty, gusting thirty seven. That's a little strong. Probably a little bit higher, a little bit lower as the wind gusts kick in and out. That's crazy. All right. <clears throat> so no ATC issues. Rival demand is not a factor. We got thunderstorms in the vicinity, thunderstorms during descent, uh, possible turbulence during the uh, climb out about the first quarter of the flight. So we've got enough fuel for all that. So let's uh, program this real quick. <coughs> 118 passengers. Raleigh, 17. False. 1945, departure stand. Yep, none of them. That sim. And let's. That's out the way. Uh, let me just get make sure. So, pilot's life is going. Thirty-six thousand. That's set. Pegasus booking. Start flight.
Cool. That's it. Nobody. So we got ground, tower, center steel, yellow. Damn, we got a PDC. 378 on Charlie, cross runway 4 right and hold short of 27. Cross runway 4 right on Charlie, hold short of 27. United 378. United 378, crossing 4 right, monitor tower 128.8 and have a great flight. Guess I can't shut that up. Monitor tower on 128.8. United just me. Turn that down. Alright, start loading up that airplane. So we've got 14, four, well, we had 14 something. Total fuel is uh, 20.1, so having to take about 8,000 pounds of fuel or so. And we're just going to do this really quick. Nothing y'all haven't ever seen before. Try to do this request. Nope. Off the ground, envoy 66 is pushed back onto you off the ramp and is ready to taxi. Envoy 66, runway 33 left, taxi via Alpha Charlie, cross runway 4 left and hold short of 4 right. Ground, envoy 66, uh, taxiing over to 33 left uh, via Alpha Charlie, cross runway 4 left. And hold short for right. Alrighty, let's go in it. Let's go on. Slash minus forty seven. Throw that in. Flight in Boston departure. Thank you. 
left. Sock six. Insert. Myrtle. Arrival. ILS 1 8. No star. Insert. Delta Whiskey, push back into the ramp is at your discretion and advise ready for reposition. Alright, thanks. Uh, yeah. Alright, Red Nav, clear this out. And Boston VOR. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Secondary. I would love to welcome you aboard our flight. When you find your seat, please be sure to place your larger carry-on items in the overhead bins and smaller items underneath the seat in front of you. Unless you're in the front row, please place all of your items in the overhead bins. If you have any trouble finding a location for your carry-on items, please let a flight attendant know and we would be happy to assist you. After you put your carry-on items in the overhead bin and it is full, make sure you close it as a courtesy to other passengers. Also, be sure that the aisle is clear and sit down so that way other passengers can get by you. If you are seated in an emergency exit row, please review the exit seating responsibilities and the safety guards provided for you. Please make sure that you are able and willing to perform these actions. If you're not, please let a flight attendant know so that way you can be reseated. Now's the time to get out any last minute text five. messages if you need to, but we ask that once we depart from the gate, you put away any laptop okay. or tablet. Okay, uh, in the trip pause, five, two, one. Runway four left at Charlie. Wind that uplink. Good there, tap over. Zero fuel weight's planned at 126.3. Standard 30. Block fuel's 20.1. Taxi fuel in this flight's gonna be uh, 800 pounds. No route reserve. Alternate fuel is 3,000. And reserve fuel is 32. Have pre departure clearance. Receive. I'm not going to say anything. They already sent it to us in uh, wherever at. Let's clear this. And our squawks will be 1363. Envoy 6 is crossing runway 4 right, holding short of runway 27. And Envoy 66 crossing 4 right, monitor tower 12818, have a great flight. Over to tower 1288, thank you. Uh, let's see, Boston Sox 6, Sox, da 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 da, climb via 6, back 360, 10 after departure frequency is 33.0. We've got ground, towers 28.8. And then after 28.8, we're going to be talking to 33.0. Uh, Delta 722, ready to taxi with information at Delta. 722, runway After that, it's going to be 347. Charlie, cross runway 4 left and hold short of 4 right. Alpha Charlie, cross runway 4 left and hold short of runway 4 right. Delta 722. Flight directors, flight directors, constraints, constraints. It's all set there. Charts, SOC 6, tops 5,000. Ah, it's kind of haven't aligned yet. <clears throat> 2964 still. We are ready to go when you are. Thanks, ma'am. Still got Good two minutes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome oh aboard God. flight 738. 
with service to South Carolina. Our flight time will be we need some DLSS, y'all. Are these like passengers minutes. moving around? Don't the help. Cabin doors now closed. We ask that you make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your larger devices are now shut down and stowed. If you have not already, please fasten your seatbelt and verify it is low and tight across your lap. The tray tables and seatbacks must be in the full upright and locked position Delta for departure. Cabin crew, prepare cabin for departure. He'll get you going and have a great flight. Alright, over to 1288. Thanks for your help today, Vision 2 Delta Whiskey Bay. Just waiting on those uh, eight ears to finish aligning. Zach, my friend, welcome aboard. Not sure when you uh, said hey, 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 but uh, been tr been busy trying to get this airplane out of here. Just had us a nice little uh, dispatch uh, flight planning period. We kind of dug in a little bit deeper than normal and looked at the weather and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just to give y'all a little quick departure brief before we do the actual departure brief. Um, got a few factors that we're concerned about on this flight. We've got uh, a little bit of turbulence possible in about the first quarter of the flight. Then after that, uh, we're going to have some scattered, isolated thunderstorms to deviate around during the descent. At least, you know, if it were real, real world, we would. Uh, who knows what live weather this is going to show. And then also, um, forecast and vicinity thunderstorms at ETA. So we've got 35 minutes of dispatch add plus 10 minutes of fuel below the line. 722 on Charlie Um along with uh, Raleigh as a precautionary alternate for the vicinity thunderstorms. And everything else looks good. Yes. Flight plan. Tech. Let's get that load sheet. All right, so for our actuals, we got one twenty six four. Twenty-eight six on the CG. Toe CG is twenty-seven five. Plan takeoff weight one forty-five six. For like hundred pounds over max takeoff weight. So by the time we would need to. If we burn that fuel, would come back. Would be under max landing weight. Blah 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 blah. Uh, let's get our perf set real fast. Three three left. It is dry. Flaps one up zero point two flex in fifty nine fee speeds forty four forty four forty six and ten twenty across the board. Good flight plans pulled up. There's constraints. A thousand. Cool. All right, departure briefs. Come here, right seat takeoff uh, again to 320 for tail strike avoidance uh, again. No MELs or CDLs. Uh, single engine taxi going to be departing 
off of 3-3 three, three left. Uh, so likely probably going to give us Charlie across four left, four right, Charlie, pretty much Charlie all the way, I would imagine. Um, no hot spots. We got two runways to cross, four left, four right. Terrain's no factor, weather's no factor. If we have to abort before V1, be my decision to reject the takeoff, come complete stop, set the parking brake, call flights instead of station, analyze situation, call for any ECAM actions or emergency evacuation checklist as required. Uh, our engine out procedure, we're going to hold at Kelsey. We'll speed up, clean up. Engine out is 1020 off the ground. We're going to be under max landing weight if we need to come back. If we come back, it's probably going to be, they'd probably want to give us 27, but we would request 3 3 left since it is longer. Uh, if all goes as planned, we're going to fly the SOX 6 top altitudes 5000, and we are squawking 1363 before start checklist. Maintenance all details on board and check. Copper press complete. Gear pins covers all removed. Signs on auto. A deers are in nav. Fuel men. Fuels 18.5. We've got 20.1 on board. Um, altimeters. 2964 set. EFB is checked. Windows door slides closing on. Beacons on. Throw servers idle. Parking brakes on. Transponder is in auto. Before start checklist is complete. Let's rock and roll. Boston ground. Hello again. Spirit Wing 738. Ready for push and start. We're at Bravo 27 with info um, something. Stand by. I think it's Echo. And information Echo for Spirit Wing 738. Wing 738, Boston Ground, good afternoon. Push back on to Alpha's approved. Advise ready for taxi. Push back on Alpha's approved. We'll advise ready to taxi. Spirit Wing 738. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Here we go. Brakes released. Push them back. I hit that damn connect tug button like 20 minutes ago. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the flight attendants for a safety demonstration. Fire them up. Roll in. When the seatbelt light is fastened, please make sure that your seatbelts are fastened low and tight across your lap. To fasten. Belt lift the upper portion of the buckle. We suggest that you keep your seatbelt fastened throughout the entire flight as we may. And should probably shut this. Please take a few oh, wait, moments we did to shut now locate cool. one of the several emergency exits on the aircraft. Hello, and some things are near your exit may be behind. In case of an emergency, we need to evacuate the aircraft. There is lighting on the floor that will guide you to the exit. In the event that the yeah, cabin loses... Mike Fox Trot, Boston Ground. Good afternoon. You're cleared to the Orlando Airport via the SOC 6 departure. Place the firmly over your nose and mouth. Climb via this departure frequency is 133.0. Although the badge is not in place, oxygen is flowing to the mask. If you are traveling with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your mask first and then assist others. Keep your mask on until a member of the crew advises you in the case of a fire. Stay unlikely to enter the water landing. A life vest is located in a pouch underneath the seat or between the armrests. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Lift it over your head. Wrap the strap around the waist and lock the front. Hold the strap to tighten. Okay, Roger. Well, we're actually ready for start. So now we're not going to push today, and we're going to be ready for the start. So now we're ready for 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 start
Fairway 738, runway 33 left, taxi via Alpha Charlie, cross runway 4 left, and hold short of 4 right. All right, we'll taxi 30 left via Alpha Charlie, cross 4 left, hold short 4 right, Spirit Wings 738. So once we get on a bit of a straightaway, we'll start number two. Here's Charlie. Charlie bit me. And four left. Landing lights and strobes on. And uh, vision for Mike Fox Trot 33, position runway 33. And for Mike Fox Trot, thank you. You can contact tower now, 128.8. He'll get you ready for the reposition. Uh, 118, that's my vision for Mike Fox Trot, bye bye. Cross runway four right, and hold short of runway two seven. Clear to cross, clear to cross four right at Charlie. Hold short two seven. Spirit wing seven thirty eight. All right, let's keep those lights on. I'm gonna cross this thing a little bit quicker. Spirit wing seven thirty eight on Charlie crossing. Or should be crossing four right. Monitor tower one two eight point eight. Have a great flight. And we'll monitor tower. Thank you for all your help. Spirit Wing 738. The cabin is ready. A vision for Mike Foxtrot is. A vision for Mike Foxtrot fully ready. Vision for Mike Fox, shot the ones are 28012, gust 23, runway 33, left cleared for takeoff. Alrighty, mini brief. <coughs> 33 left, clear to go. Vision uh, departing off 33 left, gross weight is 146.4, plan is 145.6. Uh, fuel, 19, actually 20 even. Fair wing, 738, Boston Tower, hello, cross. Runway 27 on Charlie. We'll cross 27 at Charlie, Spirit Wing 738. Uh, flap config 1 plus F, V1 is 144, V2 146, reflects in 59, top altitude 5,000 feet, first fix is tech. Then once we get across this, we'll do a flight controls check. They're doing this single pilot's pretty American tough, 30 trying 30 to do all the flows and the briefings to, and uh, work the radios. American 2033, boss and tower, hello, traffic will right, cross controls, your check. runway, the ones are 28012, gust 23, runway 33 left, correction, runway 27, fiddle in. Pull up, pull down, neutral, American full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral, after start checklist. Engine and ice is off. The pump is now off. Red trim zero. After start checklist is complete. Vision uh, for Mike Fox, drop 3000 add on. Vision for Mike Fox, our contact Boston. Departure. Have a great flight. Departure. Departure. And Spirit Wing 738, Boston Tower, runway 33 left, bottom and white. Traffic will land the crossing runway. 
And we're going to need about another minute and 15 seconds if possible for engine warm up. As you can line up and wait, we gotta wait for someone to land anyways. Or is that, line up and wait on uh, 33 left Spirit Wing 738. Jabu 364 Island 27. Jabu 364 Boston Tower, hello, traffic will depart the crossing runway. The winds are 28012, gust 23, runway 33 left. Correction, runway 27, quit line. 27, quit line, Jabu 364. Alrighty, before takeoff all the way, gross weight France complete pitch trim is 27.5% CGSET, V1, VRV2 flex is 144, 44, 46, flex 59. Uh, flat check again, one check again for Jabu 364. Flat controls check, you can be able to take off all green, you can set a check for the windshield on the way, TCAS, could set TRA, camera cruise advisor, memory complete, take off runway 3 3 left. Fuel, man, is 18.5, we've got 19.9 on board. Sorry, 738, ready to go. Ready to go, Wing 738. Engine mode set, there's no more blue packs are set. Fantastic, wind speed 0 1 2, gust 2 3, runway 3 3 left, clear for takeoff. 3 3 left, clear for takeoff, Wing 738. Uh, 3 3 left. Sorry, <laughs> clear take off, 3 3 left, Spear Wing 738. Alright, man, flex, SRS runway off first blue. Bit of crosswind. 8 knots are set. Neutral by 100. Contact off departure one three three point zero. Have a great flight. Over to departure. Thank you for your help today. Spirit wing seven thirty eight. And thirty four seven will be the next one. Uh, one three four point seven. And uh, apologize if uh, we just like out there. Our internet's not having fun at all. Right turn heading 130, maintain 4000. Turn right, um, which was the heading? 130. 130, maintain 4000. No better problems here. Jeppo 312, contact tower 12818. Over to tower 128.8, thanks for your help, Jeffrey 312. Jeff number 348, three miles from Loner, maintain 2000 until established on the localizer. Cleared ILS, runway 27 approach. Cleared ILS, 27 approach, maintain 2000 until hit the localizer, 34. From 348, thanks. Uh, maintain 170 knots until rip it. Maintain 10 knots until rip it, 170 mm -hmm. knots. 170 knots, total ribbit, sorry about that, different. Departure, Spirit Wing 738, hello again, 5000 on the SOC 6. Spirit Wing 738, Boston departure, hello, climb and maintain 14000. 14000, Spirit Wing 738.
Bomber Bravo Sierra 127, turn left, heading 360, descend and maintain 2000. Turn left, heading 360, maintain 2000, Bomber Bravo Sierra. Bearing 738, contact ball from center 134.7. Over to center, 347 Spirit Wings, uh, 738. Three four seven. Hello again, Senator Spirit Wing seven thirty eight is at nine thousand. I'm to uh, one four zero in the Sox six. Spirit Wing seven thirty eight, Boston. Center, hello, climb and maintain five hundred three six zero. I maintain five hundred three six zero for Spirit Wings seven thirty eight. There we go, three six zero. Ding for that. Super 7 Whiskey contact New York Center 125.32. Have a good day. Good New York Center 125 decimal 325. Uh, thanks very much and have a good day. Super 7 Whiskey. Put some meat in the Super dark outside. I just got turkey juice. My girlfriend put some turkey on some, on a plate to fall, and uh, so she asked me to put it in the free in the fridge after it's done thawing out. So I quickly tried to uh, throw it in the fridge since we're flying online, and the plate's full of all kinds of bloody turkey juice just spilled on my shorts and on the floor. So that's great. I have to mop the damn floor now. Delta 1212 descend via the J Fund 2 arrival, runway 27, Boston altimeter 2964. Descend via the J Fund 2 arrival, runway 27. And it's all over the counter, too. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, this guy don't need to talk to me. Doubt he will. <clears throat> looking at me what the hell's going on as we are back I gotta change my shorts I got turkey juice all over my shorts So you know what that means? Multicam shorts for the win. <clears throat> we are on our way. So maybe we'll turn on Rex weather again um, when we get a bit closer. 
And maybe then it'll draw some thunderstorms for us. <clears throat> All right, back to the chat. Sorry, guys. I was freaking busy. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what 91 213 is. Or, I don't... Who knows FARs off the top of their head? Jay. Fuck with me. Frida 519 at shows. Clear to ILS 1835 approach. At shows. Clear to ILS 35 approach. for 509. I'm going to Google it, though. At Canada 1289, are you back? I'm sorry if I missed it. Yeah, we're back at Canada 1289. At Canada 1289, thanks. Cleveland and Toronto are closed. Radar service terminated. Frequency change approved. Take care. That's unfortunate. We'll talk to you later at Canada 1289. So basically, 91.213 is for... Being able to depart with broken shit on the airplane if you have an MEL and like approved procedures to defer items and stuff like that. Cool. Now what's the other one? 121-189. Dude, if you can remember FARs on top of your head, you're not going to have any issues in life as a dispatcher. Nobody knows FARs on top of their head. Uh, 14 CFR 121.189 Airplanes Turbine Engine Powered Takeoff Limitations No person operating a turbine engine powered airplane may take off that airplane at a weight greater than that listed in the air No shit We really need a CFR to say that? Uh, flight manual for elevation airport Ambient temperature and distance takeoff blah, blah, blah. Thank God for aerodata We don't have to figure that out ourselves the accelerated stop distance must not exceed the length of the runway. This is common sense. Jay, if you're to the point where you know, if you know FARs off the top of your head, you can have my job as dispatch manager. <laughs> I refuse to try to memorize FARs. It's not happening. No, sir. No, sir. Currently doing Southwest Ops, just took off from Phoenix, about to land in LA, then off to Sacramento. Nice. Dude, I like the, the, I shot the approach not too long ago into Sacramento, and I'm surprisingly a very pretty approach. I wish I had, uh, I wish there was payware for that airport, because it was, it was a really nice approach, and then that nice approach was kind of killed by the freaking default scenery. I don't know why that pilot is loud. Yeah, it, that's the weird thing with that sim is like, the pilot, like one pilot will be super damn loud, the other pilot will be like, kind of quiet, and then the controller will be like normal, it's just, it's per, um, it's like per pilot or, or per user I guess, but there's this, so you can, you can turn your mic volume up and down, and um, I guess the guys who have, who are super loud, like have theirs cranked all the way up, and they're not like checking these levels. I should kind of check these levels to know if they're too loud or not. Alex Flies, what's up? <clears throat> How do you get that little card on the uh, right Vision seat? 2 Delta Whiskey, leaving my airspace shortly. Washington's closed. Radar service terminated. Frequency change for you. Take care. I shall show you, sir. Alrighty, over to you in a comp of Vision 2 Delta Whiskey. Thanks for the services. See you next time. So, um, this little card is part of the livery. Uh, Frida 519, wind 290, gust 161835, clear to line. Clear to land, runway 35, for the 519. Envoy 66, uh, I see you correcting. Make it sound about 280. I'm going to descend you shortly. 280 for now. Envoy 66 is uh, correcting to 280. So, <clears throat> Alex, in, in that link, is uh, two spirit liveries. Uh, you got the uh, the traditional yellow livery, and then also the Skittles livery. And I teamed up uh, with the guy that paints this airplane. Does does an amazing job. Um, he's also painted the the cabin in spirit colors, all spirit branding. He's got spirit on the flight attendant panel. Delta 12, 12. I'm sorry, one more time. Spirit 
with the fin number on the, uh, the, on the door. Via the arrival, the 12, 12. So the 12-12, thanks. And descend via the J-5 to arrival, runway 27. Uh, did a great job. <clears throat> so I kind of teamed up with him right. and uh, provided him some information for these cards because these are realistic to Spirit Airlines cockpits. Uh, these Lockheed are just Walker, general information on the airplane. So Walker 2310 Boston Center, hello, number, clear, direct from Roebuck, just set a maintain, level 230. Roebuck level 230, Walker 2310. Turn them down for y'all. Instead of serial number, it's really just the FIN number, so the four digit uh, letter, or the four digits uh, for the aircraft. Uh, that's a company thing. Um, we got Boston that. Center FedEx 289 is with the leveling flight level 190. It's still loud. And then it got the ship number up here as well. Um, so anyways, that was something that him and I kind of teamed up on, sent him the information and some pictures of the real life thing, and uh, uh, he replicated it and made it for us, and <laughs> did an amazing job doing it. The American turn, 564, to send that pause, discussion, maintain, five, double, two, five, zero. There we go. That's better. But uh, yeah, so just install those liveries, Onboard, and you'll have them. I'm <clears throat> my first time doing that approach. Sweet. I think you'll like it. I I think I landed on seven one seven right. Uh, coming in like from the mountains, so it was it was quite a pretty approach. <coughs> it, can, it definitely gives you kind of the perspective too, just how pretty NorCal can be. I heard I'm gonna be blasted with FARs on Sunday for the. Uh, I don't think he's gonna. If they make you quote like numerically FARs, that's some bullshit. Like, real-life dispatchers do not have to know FARs verbatim, like, per the numbers. And if an FA inspector came to me right now and said they do, I'll tell him, false. Um, you can always, I mean, that's why we have manuals in the internet. You can look all that stuff up. You do not have to know, like, oh, well, FAR, blah, 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 blah. 121, 189. The, like you don't have to quote numbers. If let me know if you have to quote numbers, because that's some that's some BS. And I would definitely would spread that information to anybody else who's coming up from behind. Um, yeah, even in my oral, I didn't have to quote FAR 121.189. Da 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 da. Never had to do that. And there will be times in your career as a dispatcher, you'll have an FAA inspector sit with you just to kind of just watch, see what you do, probably ask you some questions. And they will not ask you, what FAR? Well, I mean, I don't know, they might. If, a, if an FAA inspector really just wants to be an asshole, they can do it. They'll ask, they might ask certain questions if they're trying to be an asshole. Or they, they see you doing something, like, way wrong, and they kind of want to dig you into a rut, they can do it with questions, but... Um, I think New York gave you 300 or less. I think it's 300 knots exact. But yeah, they should not ask you verbatim. Like, uh, 300 what does 121.189 say? 300 exactly. I don't know, bro. Oh, you tell me. Exactly. Apparently, you know. <clears throat> but in real life dispatch, you'll be able to reference everything. You got the internet, you got manuals, all that good stuff. Um. I guess in an oral, like you'll probably be taking in your FAR books. So, ooh, look at that. Hello, I need some rudder. On. My control. Pretty big uh, weather update there. <coughs> that was fun. American 564 leaving my airspace. Montreal's closed. Radar service terminated. Frequency change approved. Take care. Um, yeah. So definitely like tab your FAR books. Any, and I'm sure they're probably telling you this in class, but any any like very big prominent FARs like you know when Alton's required and all that Has stuff. Tag top, those. Did we miss the call? I had to step away for a second there when authorized. Uh, you did not know. And uh, leave my airspace shortly. Washington Alex radar flies. <clears throat> nice to see you around as place. well, sir. Hope okay, all is going uh, good. How's the progress on uh, the 777 coming? So, uh, Unicom one, two, I know that you've been working on that. I believe I recognize your voice from our event the other day. Uh, there were a group of visions coming to Boston on Sunday night. 
known to be around on occasion. <laughs> uh, maybe it was someone else. Uh, we have full ATC. Yeah, I'm glad it worked out. Peter 519, welcome to Manchester. Where are you parking today? Uh, park at uh, Signature Aviation. So if I get uh, Bravo Hotel to park, I'd be great. 1493. Taxi Rampy Hotel, have a good one. Taxi Rampy Bravo Hotel, have a good one. Uh, for 509. Alright, thousand to go. Rides are smooth so far, so we'll kill that seatbelt sign. United 148 Boston Center, hello, clear direct to Roebuck, descend to maintain, thought of a 230. And let's go right forward on this one. Walker 2310, descend via the Roebuck 3 arrival, runway 27, Boston altimeter 2964. Center Roebuck 272964. Walker 2310, thank you. Keep the speed up for now and then probably speed that robot. Keep the speed up and probably that robot for me. Alright. Alt Star. Mock. Should see Alt Cruise here any second. Nice little lag. Alt Cruise. Three six zero. South of twelve twelve, contact Boston approach one three three point zero. Have a good day. That weather's really building around uh, Myrtle. There's only five of us in the classroom still studying. Today was the last day of class. So, are you taking like extra time to study before your oral and practical or? Um, like, do you get to choose your, like what day you want to take yours on? I think we got to, I can't remember. I remember if we were assigned it or if we were told. Alrighty, let's see HTO. What are we supposed to have at HTO? It's getting hot in this room. <laughs> Give them sticks, yo. What I do? How they been a little bit sick, but how you doing? Well, <clears throat> better than you sounds like. <laughs> but I feel you though. I was I had COVID like month ago month and a half ago I don't know it sucked it was worse the second time than the first time I had it and it's supposed to be more lethal the first time it was like a mild flu it still wasn't fun though I can't keep missing streams oh you're fine that's what the playback buttons for I go back and I put in uh, you know, put the chapters in so that y'all can always come back and, and catch what you want to see instead of having to like rewatch the whole thing and all that stuff so we're supposed to have 15-9 on board. We got 16-3. Okay, so that's definitely closer. You'll we'll probably turn that perf factor down a little bit more to like minus 14 or something. We we'll keep getting overburns on this airplane. <clears throat> I am. There's only one examiner, so only two a day. Wow, that's it. Wow, we had uh. Oh, I take that back. We had three examiners. I take that back. We had, I think, two from American and one from Southwest. Um, but if I recall, I don't think we did. Like, I don't think the two. I don't think there were like even two instruct instructors going at once. But I did mine Back towards the end. Cross Tressa, add and maintain six thousand. Bradley altimeter two nine seven two. Tressa, add and maintain six thousand.
FedEx 289, please, flight level 190. I'm oh, sorry, one more time. Chaos FedEx 289, checking out our flight level 190. Order. Black set 59, descend via the Roebuck for your arrival runway 27, Boston, off similar 2964. So we're kind of chatting with the with the devs from uh, V Spirit. <clears throat> I'm going to send them a picture of the uh, ACARS message that we got in route. And for those of y'all who weren't here, let me show y'all this ACARS message we got. Look at this. Church or Jesus Christ.org. Uh, so I sent that to them to let them know, like, yo, something's up. Although, anybody can send messages from from Hoppy, I guess. Um, but I sent them a message. And I was like, hey, I wonder if I'm ever going to get an ACAR from The Hub, if y'all know what I mean. The Pornhub. <laughs> that would be quite hysterical. Direct Robux, level 2 one Zero Should be talking to us here soon. Oh, we got New York Center coming up. 25. What is it? Let's approach. 2532. Let's get that pre programmed. Like 2532. I like to have it pre-programmed, one, so we can switch faster, and then two, I can read it and not sound like a dum-dum. But then again, you can make yourself look like a dum-dum, like I did on the way in, where I had approach pre-programmed. Um, no, I had ground pre-programmed because there wasn't a tower. So essentially, we're going from approach to ground, but tower had come online, and I didn't see that. So he was like, ah. Go to tower on 28 point whatever. And I was reading it in my standby and it was wrong. So you can't actually make yourself look a dum dum too. Over to Unicom. Thank you for all your help today. Have a good one. We'll see you seven uh Spirit Wing 738. Okay, I guess uh It shows I'm supposed to go into New York Center. Uh, whatever. We'll just do this. 22, 8. And then if we get pinged, we'll be ready. Cruising on along, old son. Uh, let me see. Catch him back up. <clears throat> what have you been up to? Well, uh, not much, really. I went and worked a couple days. Thought I was going to be training. Turned out I wasn't training. They took it off my schedule, which kind of sucks because it's a little bit of it's like eight extra hours of pay that I lost, but no big deal, whatever. And then been off for four days, so haven't really done anything fun these past four days that I was off. <laughs> um, yeah, just been kind of chilling. Uh, we streamed a couple days ago, and then uh, yeah, I can't think of nothing fun that we've done. So, not much really. I was up to 3 a.m. Uh, flying into Salt Lake City. I did not know there was payware scenery for that. Discovered there was, so I installed it, flew into it. And if you haven't flown into Salt Lake, you should do that. It's a pretty cool approach because the airport's like down in between big ass mountains. So, um, that was a lot of fun. Took some screenshots from that flight yesterday. Let's look these, and you'll see what I mean. These big ass airport or big ass uh, mountains, and I did fly the 73 yesterday, which is unheard of for me for the most part. I hadn't flown it in so long, figured I'd fly it. So this was leaving uh, Vegas. I put it on daytime because I wanted to see stuff, but I was flying at like two in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. So this is coming into uh, into Salt Lake, really close to some mountains. So I was like, you know, we were right on Glad on Glad Path <coughs> on the Arnav arrival. So I was like, yeah, it's kind of kind of weird that 
the route was going to bring in that close to some terrain, but what else? And that's on the other side of the of the airplane at the same time. Got some nice, uh, pretty sunsets. This was uh, turning base. Got some mountainous terrain out ahead. Obviously, the shit's uh, a lot higher. I was at 8,300 feet, and the terrain goes up to 13,500 feet, a little further off. So, it's a good time. Just that PBR looking just so sexy. And then yeah, somehow like I don't, I don't even know. I think the weather updated and got this overcast layer, so it went from that. To that, but I was flying on Rex to see what how Rex would do. And then here's the approach. The cockpit's pretty much on fire. And then yeah, that's old. It's X plane. But uh, yeah, it was a it was a really cool flight. So if y'all haven't flown into Salt Lake, I uh, highly it, uh, highly advise that you give that a shot. It's a lot of fun, real pretty. <laughs> Laying in bed doing some f flight here and there. Currently with a 40. Ooh, what is that? Thing? All right, we got a. You know, I'm American, so we got to translate that. Google 41 Celsius to Fahrenheit. Shit, 105. Well, if you get much hotter, you might need to go to the hospital. That's no bueno. Hopefully you're taking medicine stuff, right, to try to keep your, um, get your temperature down. Some anti-inflammatory or whatever it's called. On the positive side, I got the A321. Oh, nice, the, uh, the one from Latin VFR. Just trying to join V-Spirits, but everything is so confusing. Just so reading right now. Yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely a little bit different. Like I've I've been a Delta Virtual guy for a long time, and then I saw that you could do, um, you know, the ACAR stuff. So I was like, ah, gotta look into that. So I pretty much just came to V-Spirit solely for the ACARs, and um, it did take me a hot minute. So if you like, I can kind of show you the way to. I do you a flight so when you come into V Spirit you know this is the page it's gonna bring you to uh, likely you would have to hit book flight over here um, since I'm already airborne I'm gonna have to uh, I wonder if that's cruise simulations Nathaniel Cruz I'll probably find out through Volanta because we be friends on him hmm if it is, he ain't on Blanth right now. Damn, that dude's like 60. Does that dude do nothing but flights him? It's crazy. That's so many, so many flights. Anyways, um, but because I'm already airborne, I'd have to do it through hit view flight and then book additional flight. But in that web page, you would typically hit book flight, which would then bring you to this page. And then from here, you just select wherever it is that you want to go next um so you can, like click that would be a probably a repo flight we don't I, don't I don't think we do myrtle to atlanta uh so you do myrtle to like orlando hit book flight and then from here you have a couple different options um you pick your your flight if there's more than one it'll give you a plus sign if there's only one then you just click the one flight you want um, or actually you don't click anything because you don't have any other options to choose from so you just you're under this flight so then you got your flight number call sign uh, put in your aircraft tail number um, so I use 697 or 617 because that's the two like really nice um, spirit liveries that I've got I'll select that once you pick your airplane everything else opens up and so you can either dispatch via sim brief or dispatch without sim brief now what I do because I like to have control um, I'll open sim brief separately and I'll just run these side by side so we'll do that sim brief over here and then from edit flight or like from a new flight you would put in your details so NKS uh, 1230 put your city pair what time you plan on departing uh, put, pick your uh, airplane and then this says it, it runs every flight to CI 15 um, but you can fly as fast as you want so choose your CI and then uh, from there you know you're just planning a flight like normal pick your uh, departure arrival runways your extra fuel your contingency fuel you always if you're flying in the states which uh, most of most of the V Spirit flights are gonna be domestic US flight rules the only time that 
you would apply like flag flight or flag fuel policy would be for 950 nautical miles from the U.S. mainland. Um, so for the most part, if you're like going south of Panama, Central America, then it's domestic flight rules, at least based off of company op specs. So <clears throat> 45 minute reserve, got your contingency fuel, da 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 da, just plan everything like normal. Once you kind of get settled with the Simbri flight plan that you want, then come over here and finish the rest. Um, so if it puts you know at like, so we'll just go to my briefing. So like you know this one put us at 36, so I'd put in 36,000 feet. Um, when I'm planning the flight, I'll take the passengers that it gives me and I'll put it in the passengers. And then just to be a little more realistic, I'll take the passenger count. So in this case, it would be 96 passengers. So I'll do 96 times 40 pounds a bag. That gives you a payload of, or not a payload, but cargo of 3.8. So then I would choose that in the freight. Put in your alternate if you got one. Uh, ETD, departure stand, because you do get extra points if you depart from the stand that you select. So like we were leaving wherever, Myrtle, tell it we're going to leave from A6, and then if you actually leave from A6, you get extra points. Um, arrival stand, just leave that to any, because no matter what you set, the A cars that your airplane gets will have likely have something different. I've told this before, hey, in Orlando, I want to park at gate 32, and then I get gate 25 or something stupid. So uh, you can just leave that to any, not sharing, and then network, um, offline or whatever network you'll be flying on. <coughs> Last, take your route from SimBrief, copy and paste it into here, hit dispatch without SimBrief, you're done. Then you go to your ACARS client, go to booking, select the, the flight, hit start flight, and then you are on your way. Um, little tidbits for vSpirit. So depart from the runway that you're, or the, uh, the airport you're su supposed to depart from, you get 10 points for that. Um, arrive at the gate that it tells you to, you get points for that. Start engine one first, you get points for that because that is Spirit SOPs. Um, do a single engine taxi out, extra points. Single engine taxi in, extra points. Um, if you have 25 minutes or more of pre-flight time, extra points. And if you're connected to the network, extra points. Um, all that stuff is covered in the SOPs, whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of the, the rough, quick, and dirty for you on vSpirit. Back out of this. Let's see what else we got. Jay says that's freaking hilarious. Nice, <laughs> nice Russian. <laughs> I've always thought like Russian accents, even though like a lot of people consider them like ugly and harsh. I, I think they're kind of cool sounding. So, one twenty one five thirty three. Dude, no, I don't know shit off the top of my head. Not a single FAR. <sighs> okay, this one I should probably know, but I don't. So 14 CFR 121.533, Responsibility of Operational Control, Domestic Operations. A certificate holder conducting domestic operations is responsible for operational control. The pilot in command and the aircraft dispatcher are jointly responsible for flight planning, delay, and dispatch release. Mm, that's missing one. So it should say to initiate, delay, conduct, and terminate a flight. Um, flight planning, delay, and dispatch release of flight in compliance with this chapter and operation specification. The aircraft dispatcher is responsible for monitoring the progress of each flight, issuing necessary information for the safety of flight, canceling or redispatching of flight if, in his opinion or the opinion of the pilot in command, the flight cannot operate or continue to operate safely as planned. Each pilot in command and aircraft is during flight time in command of the aircraft, the crew each PIC of an aircraft is during flight time in command of the aircraft and crew is responsible for the safety of the passengers, crew members, cargo, and airplane. Each pilot in command has full control and authority in the op operation of the aircraft without limitation over crew members. Or da -da 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 -da. So, is this supposed to be the FAR for for operational control? 
This operational control is held by the certificate holder, which is basically the director director of operations is basically that person, and they delegate uh, operational control to flight dispatchers. I don't even know who our guy is. I need to probably need to know that. <clears throat> uh, my final into LAX was horrible. Well, shit, Zach, why was that? What happened? I had a terrible flight the other day. Terrible. I'll, I'll sh show you on the flights. It was it was pretty bad. All right, so here's Volanta, and it was just an easy um, Miami to Atlanta. I ran and got food, so I planned to hold. Airplane held for a second, and then I planned to come in on runway 28. Well, I guess World Update 10 like drastically screwed up the Imagine Sim Atlanta Airport runway 28. There was like there, the runway was like that. Um, super gusty winds as well, so I went flap three. And as I was coming in, and I don't know if this was like that that issue that people talk about with the Phoenix, but like the last ten feet, airplane just like nose down. So like hit the ground, boom, boom, go around. That one was really hard, 339 feet per minute. So then executor go around, we come back. Set up runway 27 left this time. I'm thinking, all right, we ain't going to land on 28 again. Uh, so then I'm coming in <coughs> and caught some pretty big wind gusts. Floated like a son of a bitch. So got literally like three quarters of the way down the runway. It's like, yeah, obviously we're not doing this. So go around. So we touch down, go around, swing back around. This time I'm getting impatient. So we, we shorten it up big time, come back. And then finally, on the last one, we touched down negative 155 and made it into Atlanta. Landed, I think, with uh, 5.1 on the fuel. Man landing fuel on a 320CO for planning purposes is 5.5. So we were about 400 pounds below that. Not really a big deal, honestly. It's just a planning thing. But nonetheless, still a little bit low. But as long as we're not touching the reserve, that's all we really care about. All right, let's see. X-Plane could never, yeah, I know. Flew over Salt Lake a couple minutes ago. Nice. Nice run over what about the downloads? Um, what do you mean? Downloads for what? I've, it's been a hot second, so. Oh, nice run over, the, okay, I, I see what you're saying now. Never mind. Uh, oh, damn, there's a, somebody still flying 380s. Um. So for the downloads, really the only thing you need is the uh, Pegasus A cars. Um, so you just go on there and download that, which is what this is. So when you're in booking, this is where you go to start your flight. <clears throat> so you go here, it'll load, tell you what um, gate to depart, which I didn't select a specific one because I was already not parked at a correct one. You'd hit start, and that'll take you to the A car screen. And then keeps a log of everything you're doing. Uh, so this is the Pegasus A cars. It's really the only thing you need to download. If you need to read SOPs and stuff like that, you can download those from the website. Um, yeah, I think it just detected a cruise. Like, huh? We're looking good. Um, yeah. So we can go to the website and take a look at where to get that. 
Ooh, Delta 75. Mm. Love the 75. All right, let's see. We'll click this here. Would it be under probably resources? Yeah. So you go to resources, downloads, or if you just need the client, hit the Pegasus ACARS client there. And you download it. Simple as that. You download, log in using your uh, login like you would use for the website, and boom, you are off. For downloads, there's a few different things on here. Got liveries, which I think some of these are pretty old. 321 for the tallest. These are all X plane, X plane, X plane. Uh, 698. I want to see what this one is. Oh, okay, I got that one. I want to know. I wonder if they meant 697, which is what we're flying right now. Huh. Oh, 698. Yeah, so you can download some liveries from there. There's definitely a lot more. Oh, do not share these liveries outside the VA. That's interesting. Hmm. I think I know who made this. I think... The guy who made the livery we're flying right now, I believe he made this one too, and this is specifically for um, V Spirit. So I think he's told me about this. I'll have to save that and take a look. Leonardo MD 82. Fly by wire. So yeah, they got some uh, different paint schemes on here. But you can get plenty of good paint schemes off uh, Flight Sim.2. So if you need documents like SOPs or code of conduct, bylaws, whatever, all this stuff, I've never really read any of this. Curious to see what this is. Like what's on this actual checklist? Hmm, that's kind of cool. They got V Spirit on there. Hmm. That is um, identical to mine. So if you want a good checklist, that's a good one. It is uh, quite realistic. But yeah, SOPs, anything you need, just go to uh, click a little button up here, go to downloads, and it'll take you, take it all of it. Ah, never mind, found it. <clears throat> I like driving your nuts with the FARs. Yep. That you do. Uh, give me them sticks. Never mind. Found it. Zach. Hellacious crosswind out of nowhere. Ah, uh, I've had that happen before. Uh, I had a little short pre-recorded video that I put on my channel going into... Um, I don't know why I'm leaving this up. It's not even our flight. <laughs> um, yeah, I was coming into Juneau, Alaska. And like on the last 100 feet, Winds literally shifted 180 degrees and increased, uh, which made it a little fun. That video is on the channel. Um, fun little one to watch if you're interested. Oh, yeah, and a downward sloping runway is a little tough. Not as hard, though, as trying to land on 28 
left in Lauderdale. That is a pretty extreme downward slope. If you have the Latin VFR Lauderdale, try that approach. Try uh, two eight left. <clears throat> I heard the nose down thing is due to toolbar pushback. Yep, that's what I thought too, and I don't have that installed. So I was kind of curious, unless maybe flaps three causes a problem or something, or maybe it just like I don't know flare mode or some confusion with the logic. I don't know. Where can I see messages they will send me in my McDo? Um, so you'll go to go to your McDo, McDo menu, Atsu, which is basically ACARS, is what Atsu kind of stands for in a way. AOC menu, received messages, and then you'll get it'll say Telex. That'll be from V Spirit. We got some from NKS Ops, and we were out on time. While we're looking in here, let's get a little bit of. Uh, let's get some arrival info, shall we? I'll just pull it off the. Winds are 200 at 11. 31 on the temp. And 2994. The minimums for this approach. Two hundred feet. Sweet flight plan here. Fix info. Myrtle. One eight. Let's do a uh, five mile range ring. And on the chart, Joe Kicks is the last fix. Now we just go back here. One eight radial is gonna be. 357. Nice. Make sure that all checks out. And it does. And get rid of that discon. So what's the best livery for X-Plane 11? I don't know, man. Livery is going to be a little subjective, right? Depends on what you want in a livery. Some have cabins, some don't. I don't know. I haven't flown a lot of uh, X-Plane in, in quite a while. Um, I don't think there's going to be any that's got like the little placards and stuff on the inside. Um, I would just go with whatever downloads you find in there. Because uh, the V-Spirit guys, are they're pretty... I don't know, they, what's the word? Um, they try to make it as realistic as they can. So the, the liveries that they put on there are probably going to be some pretty dang good ones, if I had to guess. Oh. Uh, the do or die list that never ends. I feel you, dude. My uh, roommate that just moved out, her, um, her boyfriend was here earlier. He's got to touch up some paint on the walls in her room because she makes him do everything. She don't do shit. I think like, the whole time that she was in the process of packing and moving out, she had him packing everything and making runs from here to the, his apartment because she's moving in with him. And <clears throat> so he came over today and he's like, yeah, she's got me over here. You know, got to paint this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, 
Yep, the do or die list that never ends. And these guys are gonna look at something different than this stupid airplane. Find us something better to watch. How about Here we go. Just kind of looking at the weather. This is a uh, four flight. <clears throat> Obviously, I know a lot of y'all probably aren't going to have four flight. I do have this through through work, but uh, just kind of checking see what we got going on. Our next fix is Wilmington ILM, which as of right now is going into some weather. So when we get a little bit closer to Wilmington, we'll turn on Rex and kind of see what's going on. We might have to fly to something else. Maybe just go direct HYW. Horry Conway, whatever that is. Oh, that's an NDB. We should still be able to go to it, though. Or we can go CPC. Camp Whiteville. Another NDB. Pretty much got some headwinds or crosswinds all the way down. No, no real tailwinds. Uh, I gotta say my wife is a hard worker I promised I'd run to the grocery totally forgot she gets off work at 30 yeah that sounds like me and my girlfriend's the same she she works hard and she busts her ass around the house and, and works works really hard <clears throat> at work but I'm the same she'll ask me to do something but I get so focused on streaming and hanging out with y'all that then like 30 minutes before she gets off it's like oh shit I forgot in fact Reminds me, I probably need to go make the bed better. She likes the bed mates as it makes the bedroom feel welcoming and cozy and shit. Even though it's like you're just about to turn around and jump back into it. You don't spend any time in the bedroom until you're ready to go to bed. So why are we making the bed? But, you know, I'm a guy, she's a girl, whatever. I feel you, dude. I'm in that same boat all the time. Look at that sexy ass C-17. If I could fly in the Air Force, that's what I'd want to fly. Fighters are cool, but... I want somebody to talk to. I want a bathroom. I don't know if it's got a bathroom or not, but probably. And uh, an oven and coffee maker. Well, that's what's really important. Would you rather fly 16 hours in that or 16 hours strapped into an F-16 or an F-22? You can't hardly move. <laughs> Just 
ZipBlue3176. Roger. Uh, that's gonna be that's why let's see there we go all right you are added Swedish Air Force. <clears throat> I wish I had an access for flight. It looks amazing. It's pretty good. And what's really cool too is like when I when I use it. Oh, it's windy. Uh, when I use it, like on my iPad, um, I can connect for flight on my iPad to the sim, and the iPad will act as if we're like in a real airplane. So it'll call out transition altitude, how much runway is left, what runway we're entering. All that kind of stuff. It's um, it's pretty damn cool. But uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Although I don't use it very much. <laughs> uh, who are you supposed to welcome to bedroom besides the both of you? Exactly. Interesting. No, it just makes you feel more cozy and than to do. They already did that. I was reading through some work email. Oh my god, 21 emails. What the hell? Ah, oh shit, I gotta fill out that. Stand by, guys. I got to uh, forgot I've got to um, fill out a recurrent, fall recurrent uh, survey. Dispatch, fire current, do you plan to attend remote or on site? Remote, of course. Please specify the OCC location you work from. That one. Thanks. Okay. This song sucks. Let me run. Let me run. <laughs> uh... Alright, Zach. Have a good one, dude. Enjoy the grocery shopping. We did all ours yesterday. There's also a little thing. If you feel like spending a little extra money and don't want to leave your sim, you can have your groceries delivered to the house. 
It's what I try to do sometimes because I'm too lazy to go to the grocery store. I'd rather sim. Uh, girlfriend isn't watching the stream. No, she couldn't give two shits about this stuff at all. She um, she wouldn't even watch the podcast I did with Blue and XP. She's like, eh, I'm not gonna understand anything you're talking about. All my other friends and family and coworkers watched it, but she didn't. Uh, what do you think is better for X Plane? Ortho V States. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the last two. All I know is Ortho V States. So, I installed it shortly before getting the MD11. I mean, the MD82, um, the 78, and the Airbus. That's which why I haven't really flown X Plane since. Um, so yeah, I don't. I can't really give you any info, honestly, because I haven't looked at the other two. But I like Ortho. I mean, I like the V States. They work totally fine for me. Obviously, it's a pain in the ass to install. Um, I did install every state that we had. But, uh, and shout out to my buddy Tony over at Jetline, who uh, helped me out with a, a hard drive to uh, put all of that, all the ortho on, because obviously it takes up a lot of, uh, a lot of memory. But, um, but yeah, I can't, I can't really comment. All I... All I've ever seen and messed with, because I never was the biggest X-Plane user, uh, was V-States. Um, nobody yet. <clears throat> the official meeting is on the 27th. They've pushed it back yet again. If I had to guess, pretty sure it's going JetBlue. Unless something drastically changed for Frontier, and they they changed their... <coughs> they changed their uh, offer from... Um, stocks and cash to just cash and then also turn around and outbid uh, JetBlue. I don't think it's going to go to Frontier. Um, yeah, that's that's just my my 10 cents. Cause, I mean, shareholders are shareholders because they're in the business to make money, right? And JetBlue is not only offering cash, but they're offering a lot more cash. Whereas Frontier is offering half stocks, which have gone down in value since the uh, initial offer, and then also cash. Uh, so unless unless Frontier changes that, I think it's going to go to JetBlue. But JetBlue can also have issues getting it approved through the Department of Justice. So even if the Spirit shareholders were to vote for Frontier, there's still a strong chance that the DOJ can block the buyout um, they already blocked the partnership between JetBlue and American, uh, so they could potentially block it. And then Spirit is still just Spirit. Or Frontier turns around, comes back, and makes another offer. So, who knows? Ooh, look at that ACJ. That's pretty. About time to break the seal. Oh, look at him. He's greasing that one. Ooh. <laughs> That's greasy. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a Airbus landing that buttery. That was that was worth looking at again. Look at that. Mm. 320 CO or 320 Neo ACJ. That's money. That is money, dude. Mm. It's a sexy shot of that 350. I personally do wish it would be Frontier. I think Frontier and Spirit obviously makes a lot of sense. They fly the same aircraft, a lot of the same market, same marketing structure with the low-cost carrier stuff, all that. 
Uh, the only difference between Spirit and Frontier are the engine types. Everything else is the same. Now, JetBlue, you can make that same argument as far as um, you made that same argument as far as like the aircraft type. It's like really the only difference between Spirit and JetBlue, they pretty much have all the same air or the same engine types, I believe. Uh, Spirit is a IAE. They fly the IAEs and then the Pratt and Whitney uh, Neos. Um, whereas Frontier flies CFMs and what's the other GEs? I can't remember what the other Neo. Or is it Roll? I can't remember Roll Royce or whatever. But yeah, Karen sure is. Yep. Without yeah, the other one was a three. Uh, oh, was a three nineteen? You might be right. Actually, I was thinking that too, and as I was going back and I was looking at it, I was like, that might be a three nineteen. Ah, you're right. It even says it right in there. Wow. I suck. Thank you for catching that, though. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of 319 Neos have been made. Leap 1A. Thank you. Karen coming in here, dropping some damn facts. Love it. <clears throat> I couldn't remember the other engine type for Neos. You'd think I would know that. But, um, but yeah, JetBlue, though, they fly 320s, 320 family with IAE engines. Um, I believe their Neos are also Pratt & Whitney's. So as far as airplanes go, you have more similarity between JetBlue and Spirit than Frontier and Spirit. But as far as the marketing and the structure in, in that regards and the destinations and stuff, there's a lot more similarity um, between Spirit and Frontier. But Karen, nonetheless, welcome aboard. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us on the Wrong Side Simulations channel today. Appreciate you coming in here and fact-checking my ass because uh, I don't like to lie. So appreciate you. should make you a mod and be the fact-checking mod. If somebody comes in here talking shit, you correct it. Alrighty, less than 80 miles top of descent. So we'll... Get this out the way real quick, and let's brief up the approach real fast. As I scratch my nose. I don't remember if I did plates for this one. I don't think I did. Nope. Let's re-import this. Or we can just do it this way. This will be probably a little bit easier and look better for y'all. And Volanta. Nope. Charts. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Let's just kind of cross-check our rad nav real quick. So the approach frequency for ILS runway 18 is 109.5 with a final approach course of 177. That cross-checks in the rad nav. Uh, final approach fix is bevet at 1,600 feet. Decision height is 200 feet off the ground. Touchdown zone elevation is 23 feet. We have a standard three degree glide slope with approach lights and a pappy on the left. We'll climb to 800 and make a climbing right turn to 3000 if we have to go around. And we'll box ourselves back around and come back and try it again since, oh, we actually, Jack Center just came online. Son of a bitch. Uh, 200 foot ceilings, half mile viz. Weather should be good enough for that unless uh, a, a sail has planted its ass over the field. We got a digital ATIS for, uh, okay. Uh, Myrtle Info Quebec, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, weather's fine. ILS approach 18. Okay, sweet. We're set up for that. Um, we're going to be talking to, looks like, 3592. 3592. Wait for them to ping us. Uh, right. Okay. <clears throat> Just finishing this up real quick. Uh, 
So the weather's good enough to shoot this approach, obviously. On runway 18, we have high intensity runway lights, approach lights, Pappy on the left, 30 degree glide path on that Pappy. It's grooved. RVR is reporting in front of the glide, so we have 8,569 feet of usable runway. It's 150 feet wide. Once we land, it's going to be a left hand turnoff, hopefully at Alpha 3. If I suck, Alpha 2, and if I big time suck, it'll be Alpha 1. It's probably what's going to happen. Uh, we don't have an ACARS yet on where to park. Hopefully, we'll get that info soon, unless uh, the Russians hack our ACARS again. This is an ILS, so ILS push buttons. Oh, wow. I didn't know that flight director was on. Or was not on. <clears throat> uh, so ILS push buttons are armed. I'm going to go auto brake low. If there's any questions, throw it in the chat. Other than that, approach brief is complete. All right, so let's try, let's try Rex. I'm kind of scared to. This is about to get real janky. Uh, live weather, turn it off. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then turn this on. That is obnoxious. Start weather synthesis. All right, so we got some clouds out there. That'll work for now. Alt cruise. Uh oh. EGT over limit. That's no bueno. EGT over limit thrust lever to below limit. Let's go 340, help the airplane accelerate, reduce the workload on that engine, recruise the airplane. Hmm. I wonder if that's got something to do with the weather. That we just changed. Thrust lever two idle engine two. What? Hell no. Alright, so it looks like it's all working itself out. Alrighty, 34 blue. Cool. I'm going to go uh, pee real quick before we start talking to Jack Center. Alt Star, y'all have control. And let me guess, that was probably EGT over limit for engine one and two.
So just feeding my dogs real quick. And uh, when we get back, if we still have the EGT over limit, then I'm uh, going to open up my company's com page and see if we can't see what it recommends. Try not to spill this water on the flow. All right. EGT over limit. That's got something to do with the... Yeah, SAT plus two? The hell? Yeah, it should not be two damn degrees. Level off. There we go. SAT negative forty one. Yeah, <laughs> Rex weather. Let's go get down there. I'm tired of hearing that horn. All right, we are descending. Uh, bottom altitude. Shoot ten thousand for now. Keith, hi Captain, great interview with Blue and XP the other day. I learned a lot from you. Awesome, I appreciate that. Thank you for coming and stopping by and hanging out with us. Um, if you want to, man, I, I recently started this new little series on the uh, on the channel. I'm uh, just kind of going through some flight planning. I think the first episode was like just very basic, quick and easy flight planning. Then we talked about some ATC constraints on episode two. Today we kind of covered all the different types of fuel, from contingency fuel, tanker fuel, extra fuel, men uh, require takeoff fuel, that kind of stuff. Um, so once I'm done with this stream, I'm going to go in and throw in chapters. And uh, if you want to, if you're interested in the flight planning stuff, um, you'll be able to come back and watch the flight planning segments. Uh, we definitely kind of deep dove things a little bit more on this leg before we started flying it, looking at the weather, that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm glad you really, really enjoyed it. And if you have any questions with dispatch stuff, feel free to join my Discord and uh, hit me up there, and I'll be more than happy to, to answer any questions you got, man. But I'm, uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I was super nervous the whole time. But um, we were already talking about doing a part two <clears throat> after we got uh, off the, off the uh, episode. And then the other day in the chat, somebody had a good idea that uh, they bring me and V1 into the podcast at the same time and just kind of discuss, like, all right, so here's a scenario. What's the pilot's perspective on it? What's the dispatcher's perspective on it? And then how would we, like, communicate and talk that out? And, like, what is the consensus that we would come to and, like, that kind of stuff, which I thought was a great idea. So I pitched that to Blue and XP and let them know, and and uh, they really liked the idea. So hopefully sometime in the future there will be a part two coming. And maybe it'll be uh, both of us. Look at your TAT. Maybe you have to get the temps with the custom weather. Yep. So yeah, you were you're were right. You were so right. TAT is negative three. SAT negative 27. ISA plus 17. Yeah, I, ha I kind of figured that's what the issue was. Was the temps? 35.92. Hola, Jack Center, Spirit Wing 738. We're at uh, 27.8, descending 10,000. Spirit Wing 738, Jack Center, Kadena, Squawk 1037. 1037, Spirit Wing 738. Alright, Info Romeo. 
738, radar contact of the Wilmington VOR. You're going to maintain 10,000, the metal altimeter 2994. Down to 10,000, and altimeter is 2994, Spirit Wing 738. Is that the real. Oh, we got Myrtle Approach too. That's cool. 27.4. Myrtle Adis. That's weird. If I put the winds in like to the exact degree. Winds 209 degrees at 14 knots, gusting 20 knots, 10 statute miles, few at 43, scattered at 5, scattered at 65, temperatures 29, dew points 25, altimeters 2994, expect visual runway 18. Uh, goals on and in the vicinity of the airport, 18, glide slope out of service, no approval required for pushback, da -da 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 -da. interesting. All right, so that's going to change things. Um, glide slopes out. So now, Lokes out. Or a glass of out rather. So our minimum descent altitude is 400 feet. We want to add 50 feet to that. That's going to be 450 on the mins. So let's go. Make sure y'all can see it. Uh, perf. Nope. Yep. Next phase. And then 450. Uh, not too familiar with localizer approaches, so this would be fun. Three quarter of a mile. Sweet. Well, we should be able to get a visual in the airport pretty quick. I wish I could get weather. U and V1 on Blue Experience would be epic. I agree. I think it would be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And V1 seems like a pretty cool dude. At my company, our pilot group is really awesome. Pretty easy to work with. Easy to have hard conversations with. And we almost always come to the same conclusion on uh, issues. So now, instead of um, arming the approach, we're just going to do the loc. Bevet 16 Hundo. Missed approach, 3000. Sweet. One thing I wish that the Airbus did, that the boat, or the Airbus would do that the Boeing does. I wish I could go ahead and spin this and like have a um, like um, like preset the altimeter before pulling it but you have to pull it and then set it. I would rather like spin it preset and then when we cross pull and uh, or I guess it's push rather. 27.4 for Spirit Wing 738. Have a good night. Delta 54, 54, thanks for Romeo. I don't know the flight plan for you. Can refile it. Uh, yes, sir, I can. Roger. And Myrtle Approach, Spirit Wing 738, 17.74, flight level 100. We have information, Romeo. Spirit Wing 738. 
Red Ridge Park's good. Afternoon, thanks for Romeo. Um, Depart Williams heading 260 vectors for the visual runway 18 approach. After Williams, we'll go to a heading of 260 and we'll plan for the uh, runway 18 approach, or visual 18 approach, Spirit Wing 738. Spirit Wing 738, policy discretion, Senate 2000. Pilot's discretion 2000, Spirit Wing 738. Take it on down, on down. And approach, uh, I know I just read it back, but I already forgot. Short term memory loss. Uh, what was the heading again after Williams? <laughs> you and me both. 260. 260 on the heading. I'll write it down this time. Alrighty. 260, so I don't damn forget. <clears throat> Alright. Real quick. Approach checklist. Briefing is complete. Approach table by 1,000 feet. ECAM status is checked. See belt signs. Uh, are on <clears throat> minimums. MDA 450 is set. Engine ice 1 and 2 are off. Altimeters 2994 set. Approach checklist is complete. Uh, approach to the building 54. I have flat files at that time. Delta 54, 54, I have your clearance. Realize Grab another beer real quick. Delta 54, 54, you're clear to Nashville from Grandstand as filed. Direct Columbia. Red Air 10, 3000. Red Air 4, 10, departure with me. Five, one, four. Can you please repeat the squawk again? Let's get a... Uh, nope, wrong folder. Let's get a replay up and ready. <clears throat> That's set. When I go to Pegasus, my booked flight won't load. Um, so, turn on FSU IPC. Uh, it uses FSU IPC to talk to the sim. So, turn that on, then try to connect, and it should work. I'm, I'm going to use you as a tutorial. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Thanks, sir. We could do the RNAV, but I have a feeling he's going to vector us. Oh, shit. I guess I was supposed to go 260. We're pretty much already 260. Um... No. We'll just keep it at 250. Um, we could do the RNAV, but we need to be not on a heading to do it. RNAV would be easier, but we'll just stick with the LOC. In fact, LOC is so hard and easily messed up that it was like a an approved approach type by my company and has since been unapproved and now our guys can no longer shoot localizer approaches. So they're not the easiest to do. <clears throat> Didn't have a lot to get already back able to nice perfecto. Just set in the standby one so you don't forget or anything. It's time to improve your talking on VATSIM. Below flight level 100 is not flight level. I'm trying to make things quick. Ah, whatever. All the same shit to me. Maybe it is different elsewhere. But I guess you're right. Above whatever altitude is the flight levels. Yeah, I think 180 is, is correct. So I was about to say that, but. Didn't have to, because I got Karen over here fact-checking for me. Nothing says good landing like a pilot with a beard hand. That's right.
go back to manage descent. Well, I guess we can't because we're on heading. Delta 54, 54, middle uh, approach, ready for taxi. Delta 54, squared, taxi to runway 23, by Alpha. Middle approach, Delta 54, 54, uh, I request for uh, progressive taxi. <laughs> okay. Out of the ramp, turn right, that's Alpha, all the way to the end of 2-3. So now since we got me on heading, can't really fly the VNAV glide path. So I'm just kind of doing it with vertical speed. And then my dog's whining. Mace, come here. Come here. Macy, come on. Get up. Come here. You're okay. Come here. I'm, you're not in trouble. Just need to get out of the way so Bella can get in. I think the dog's got to go use the, the the bathroom. Hey, go lay down. Damn it. Not right there. You're in the way of my chair. If we wanted to cheat, I guess technically we could, uh, you know, fly the ILS, but try not to be a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Fur wing 738, once you break out of the clouds, therefore it'll be about 17 miles at your send to 11 o'clock port field. Roger, we'll report the field in sight when we get it. Spirit Wings, 738. Why can't your company go for local anymore? I don't know. <clears throat> I've heard rumors it was like it was too expensive to train and they were getting messed up all the time. Um, there were like ASAP reports about it and stuff. I don't know. Um, I just know they can't do it anymore. Down draft out of that cloud, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. Make it do that. Turn left two one zero until you get the field. Two ten till we get the field. Spirit wing seven thirty eight. Hello, dash. And spirit wing seven thirty eight has field in sight. Spirit wing seven thirty eight. Clear vision approach one eight. Clear those approach from a 1-8, Spirit Wing 738. Delta 54, 54, when you're ready. Wind, 2 one zero one five. runway 2-3, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, thank you.
man, it's crazy, like, how, how young kids are giving all this stuff a shot. There's not a chance in hell that if I was at whatever that kid's age is that I'd be trying to talk on the radios and stuff. I'd be way too chicken shit. Spirit Wing 738, wind 20014, gusted 20, runway 1-8, clear to land. Runway 1-8, clear to land, Spirit Wing 738. There it goes. Look star. Vinny plus ten. There goes flaps one. They're clear to land. And approach phase is activated. Man of speed, gear down, spoilers on, flaps. Three. Landing checklist, come cruise advised. I'm throw speed, auto brakes, low. He came in with landing all green. Landing checklist complete. Nice crosswind from the right side. <clears throat> Barely kind of see the Pappy on the left. Trying to play that crosswind a bit. We are stable at a thousand feet, so we are continuing the approach. Obviously, a thousand feet was like 300 feet ago, but you know, I'd be looking at the runway. Above. If only I had an FO to help out, or I guess a captain, rather. Minimum. Four. Continue. Left one able, and uh, Alpha to the gate, Spirit Wing 
Oh shit, I forgot to turn on the uh, replay. Never did get an ACARS message on our gate info. Although Alpha 6 <coughs> is a spirit gate. I know that because we left there. So that's what we're going to do. After landing checklist, exterior lights are set, flaps retracted, TCAS is not in standby because he won't be able to see me if I uh, have it in standby. Engine mode selectors, normal ground spoilers, or disarm radar printer, shares shares off. Actually, we'll just... He can see me from the tower. We'll go standby. Or I guess he's approached, so he's not in the tower. Pretend like we had our three minute. Shut down engine two. Because I just want to get them extra points <laughs> on that scent or whatever it's called. V pilot. Where you at? Just two's off. Alright, where's Alpha Six? Hello. Hello, birdies. We're back. They're still sitting in the same spot that when we left. Don't see. Come on, dude. This is Payware Airport. And don't have any damn gate markings. That's some BS. Uh. Myrtle Beach departure, Southwest 1, request an IFR information, Romeo. Southwest 1, Myrtle Beach approach, good. I think you're clear to a false one. Ready to let this grand strand that has followed, maintaining 3,000, expect 350 and 10, departure of me, squawk 6511. We'll just go in over here. Clear to Baltimore, radar vectors, grand strand that has filed, maintain 5,000, departure with you, squawk 6511, Southwest 1. Southwest 1, Yuri Beck is correct. Push and start your discretion and expect 1 8. Call for taxi. 1 8, we'll call for taxi, Southwest 1. Parking brake set. Engine 1 shut down. Should have had that off first. Alrighty. Parking checklist. Slides are disarmed, I guess. Engines off. Seatbelt signs are off. Exterior lights are set. Ice protection's off. Fuel pumps off. Yellow pump is off. Chalk signal are received. Parking brake is set. Parking checklist is complete. End at 21.35. Block time around two hours. Not too bad. All right. <clears throat> so let's file this with... Uh, whoop, that's their own window. So Pegasus says... Touchdown at negative 131. Not bad. Take it. 
Arrived to stand Alpha 6. So that one's done. Now let's do... Uh, this is Captain Shaquille O'Mills VA. Final there to make him some money. Negative 131 on that one as well. We'll file that. Get out of here. Thank you. Goodbye. And last but not least, actually it's not last, a pilot's life. We'll submit this one. Yes. And then we're going to check the logbook and see what we scored on the last two flights because I have not checked on the last two. Getting on close to Captain. We're at 8,300 experience points and a 10,000 for Captain. Not too far from that. <coughs> Although when I make Captain, I will not be going to the left seat. I'll be El Capitan from the right seat. Uh, let's see, logbook. Let's check our last two. Oh, what the hell happened? Oh, that's because of all the shit we had happen on the way down. All right, so going up, scored 100 points on that one. Or 100% score plus 100 extra points because of the length of flight. Uh, so nothing that we failed anywhere. We got all these 35 different attributes that it's scoring us on. Cool, we like that one. Now this one we had we had issues since we were swapping all of the, um, you know, we're swapping the weather engines and all that kind of stuff. It, it caused a lot of problems. So really, like some of this I wouldn't consider like this overspeed. It docked us seven points on that. Um, because of the overspeed, but that was due to the change in the weather engines. Uh, so really, this should have been 100. So I would say this was 100. But per this, whatever. Not a biggie. 93 points instead of 100. I can live with it. Uh, so cool, that's done. Uh, I need to go generate a new flight schedule here in a little bit. Um, yeah, and then the final will be uh, PAX. So we'll end the flight. And PAX says, <clears throat> the flight time is hour 43 minutes. I blocked it at like an hour 55, I believe. Um, negative 131 feet per minute. See if that cross checks with uh, Volanta. And Valanta says 133. Cool. So all about the same. Uh, they were 94% satisfied. I didn't give my little. Uh, I didn't do that shit. Um, maybe that hurt our score. Let me wanna wanna hear my voice. Um, but yeah, 94%. I'll take it. That's better than what I used to get. Took me forever to figure out that like. I was always departing with the seatbelt sign off. I didn't know that. Why does this keep disappearing so damn fast? Da -da 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 -da. Cool. Goodbye. So yeah, I reckon that'll uh, do it for today's stream. Tomorrow will be my first day as a uh, flight dispatch manager at my company. Um, so obviously going to be get my mind right, get focused on that. Um, I've got two early days. So tomorrow we're going in kind of early, and myself in the morning, uh, dispatch manager, we're going to sit with uh, another person for management and kind of do some in-doc training and get acquainted with what to expect here in the near future. And then uh, Thursday, doing job interviews, so another early day, and then going to um, afternoons after that. So if I can, feeling up to it, and with everything going on with the whole new role, um, I'm going to try to do some streams. But it might not be until Sunday or so that will get another one in. We'll see. Um, but as always, guys, please hit the, uh, hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if I earn your subscription, if you are satisfied with the content that, that I provide. Um, this was part three of our flight planning dispatch type uh, streams. So if you like that kind of thing and you want to learn more in depth on flight planning for whether sim or maybe flight dispatch is a is a career you'd be interested in, um, 
subscribe hit the notification bell so you always are made aware when I'm gonna go online and uh, also reach out to me on the discord if you like and uh, we can chat there if you got any questions about anything hit me up I have open door policy <laughs> um, but yeah I appreciate everybody that came to hang out today and uh, always enjoy hanging out with y'all great conversations uh, Karen I don't know if I've ever seen your name in the chat but uh, enjoyed chatting with you as well I appreciate you being my fact checker and correcting me and uh, keeping things squared away in the chat um, so yeah thank you for coming to hang out with us and uh, guys until the next one y'all keep it on the wrong side and we'll see you next time see ya